dissolved, so did the emperor's mansions through pillaging and neglect. Many were buried by centuries of earth until the Renaissance when they were looted again for their treasure. In the Renaissance, when people were building the palaces and great churches of Rome, they would come, dig tunnels, and go underground trying to recover marble and all these resources. So these were like the second vandals, in a certain sense, coming back to the city. The monuments and ruins of the empire are with us still, silent witnesses to Roman grandeur and Roman decay. The wealth and power that supported the empire's excesses could not save it from collapse, a potent lesson that gives us pause on our journey in search of history. For at least 2,000 years was their first erupting volcano. Collecting minerals and gases from here was potentially lethal. Helmets were necessary protection from falling lava blocks. When you hear about an eruption, you say, OK, I will make gas analysis, take temperature, and this and that. And when you arrive on the place, <laughs> the show is. And from Kansas City, Missouri, weighing 255 pounds, the natural good We're far away from New York City to survive. I remember, I remember that really being a terrifying moment. I was at NYU at the time. And the, the professor uh, was sitting there, and he looked up at the, watch, the clock on the wall, and he goes, well, they'll be meeting about now. They're meeting now, so we'll just have to wait. And there was like deep silence, and nothing happened, you know? It was a deep breath. And then the Soviet premier ordered his ships to turn back. In the end, the Soviet leader agreed to withdraw the missiles in return for a U.S. pledge not to invade Cuba. There isn't going to be any learning curve with respect to nuclear weapons. If you make a mistake with respect to a decision to use nuclear weapons, you're going to destroy nations. Both Khrushchev and Kennedy realized how close they'd come, and they were determined to avoid that in the future. Juicy chicken tossed in a mouth-watering sweet and spicy sauce. Introducing sweet and spicy Asian chicken, one of three new chicken temptations from Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. And to tell the truth, I've got a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Tony, creator of fine beauty products. For the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Tony. From New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Ted Max Amateur Hour, ladies and gentlemen. I just say that kind of stuff to see if you're paying attention. It is time, of course, for I've Got a Secret. And while I'm at it, good evening to our nice panel. First, there's Betsy Palmer and Bill Cullen and Bess Meyerson and Henry Morgan. Okay, now it's time to meet our special guest for tonight, our closest neighbor on CBS. Here is the host and moderator of To Tell the Truth, Mr. Bud Collier. Thank 
Very nice to have you with us, bud. Nice me, to be with you, Steve. How was your show tonight? Good. We always have a good time. Well, I know that, but I, the reason we have to ask, I suppose, is obvious enough. It's that the panel and I here are usually on stage talking to our uh, studio audience at the very time that you're on the air. I realize that, Steve, and that's why we've decided, since you cannot... ...guys people the possibility of making their own films. Sweetback made uh, $5 million, I think, before three white people in America had ever seen the film. He white. said, we will control our destiny in the future, yes. that um, there will be more and more Sweetbacks, much better by other people who are having their minds decolonized. That's just... Tell me something. There's a delicious Subway food montage going on right behind me, isn't there? Yep, I could smell it. Well, that's going to make it kind of hard to focus, but here we go. An ode to the Subway feast. Turkey, salami, cheese with roast beef, pepperoni and ham. Write this down, chief. We got them all on freshly baked bread. The Subway feast. It's as big as my head. Beat that, Jared. <laughs> Subway, eat fresh. Take the Jeopardy Challenge at 7 by Wheel of Fortune at 7.30 on WTNH Channel 8. Now, back to the Adams Family. Sir? You still there? Yeah, uh, Cayette? Um... Psst. Dude, don't stress. Stick with the classics. Order my famous tacos. Crunchy, tasty, and totally affordable, like the rest of my value menu. How many should I get? 30. <laughs> That's what I was thinking! Tonight's film, The Quiz Show Scandal, is about deception. Mass deception on television in the 1950s. Photographs don't lie, was the old saying that decent, educated Americans don't lie went without saying. No president had yet lied to us, as far as we knew. The realization that President Eisenhower had spoken considerably less than the truth when the American U-2 spy plane was shot down over the Soviet Union was still to come in 1960. And our own day of liars on television, of State Department officials, bank officers, presidents of the United States, all lying through their teeth, was far in the future and unimaginable. As unimaginable as what happened to the value of the dollar. The $64,000 jackpot of the big hit quiz show, the $64,000 question, was a fortune back then. I'd just gone to work in 1956 as a trainee at Sports Illustrated, a very good job, at a salary of $4,500 a year, which as it happens was almost exactly what quiz show contestant Charles Van Dorn was then earning as a teacher. Our story is a morality play, and as timely and to the point now as then. I learned a lot about good and evil, Charles Van Dorn would later say. They are not always what they appear to be. That he was not what he appeared to be stunned the country in a way that had never happened before, and demonstrated as never before what unprecedented potential for deception lay in the new age of television. The two worlds collided, with John playing Ian as actual harmonium. There are lives that watch television. This drop of instant glue can lift two and a half tons. But that's not what makes it unusual. It's this. The new Glumatic pen. It's a better way to glue. The Glumatic pen puts a drop of super strong, super fast glue precisely where you want it and not on your hands. The Glumatic pen prevents clogs and drips. When you need only one drop, you get only one drop. The new Glumatic pen. It mends without the mess.
The moon landing. Dr. Davenport is a scientist with General Telephone and Electronics, and he is president of its research unit. And the contraption over there is something that we've all read and heard a lot about. It is a gas laser system, laser spelled L-A-S-E-R, which was developed by General Telephone. Now, we'll go upstage here, Dr. Davenport, and make a, a demonstration. Excuse me. Sure. But before we do that, sir, uh, would it be possible for you to explain in layman's terms to the audience what a laser is? We've played around with the idea, but to be more explicit. Well, lasers rank with vacuum tubes and transistors as one of the significant scientific developments of this century of ours. Ordinary light bulbs, as you know, spray out their light in all directions, and a laser, as was correctly pointed out by our astute panel, shoots a very, very narrow pencil-like beam of light uh, in a single direction. This permits uh, conversations, perhaps, over very long distances. Well, now, what, what is it hooked up to do now? Well, right now, the television picture, which most of our viewers are watching, is transmitted from cameras in this studio through this light beam from here to here and thence over the radio stations to their homes. All right, now, right this minute, for the first time in history, a network television signal is being carried over a beam of light. The light beam is operating right now, and I think you'll be able to see it. If we lower the lights, please, uh, Frank, and I'll just puff a little smoke up, and you will see a brilliant scarlet beam going from here to here. It should show them the smoke. See, you can trace it all the way across. Grand Theft Auto Vice City, coming soon on PlayStation 2. Rated M for Mature. That is Corey. He's helping us with our inflatable decoy test for Ratchet and Clank. Oh, man. The inflatable decoy. One of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Rated T for Teen. Garfield and friends will return after these messages. He's chillin'. He's spillin'. He's totally thrillin'. The all-new twist, twist, twist in Tales of Felix. <sighs> I had to get up at 7.30 this morning, but I think it's going to be worth it because I'm about to take this train to the clouds. It's this famous Argentinian train journey. Um, buenos dias. My Spanish is fabulous when I'm hungover. <laughs> no, I have not joined the Royal Navy. I merely have a burst pipe in my attic. I rang the plumber. He said he'd be around as soon as he'd finished his breakfast. That was two hours ago. Now, what he's having for his breakfast, I do not know. Eggs? He'll be having eggs, the same as everyone else. Of course. He can't be having them boiled or fried. That'll be too quick. He's probably having them made up into a souffle surprise. There's hundreds of different ways of doing eggs. Arthur, well, you must be trying a lot. I can see him standing there in his boiler suit. The only plumber with a certificate from the Cordon Bleu. Variety is egg-shaped. And so is your umbrella. Hold it over me while I eat me eggs. Eggs is versatile. You can do anything with eggs. Well, try using a couple of them to block up that pipe. Oh, my soldiers are soggy. Well, I'm not the kind to kiss and tell, but I've been seen with fair up. I've never been with anything less than a man so fine. I've been on fire with Sally Field, gone fast with a girl named Bo. But somehow they just don't end up as mine. It's a death defying life I lead. I take my chance. Night, and he'll continue to forage long after dark. In the tree den, the cubs are restless. They're Don't come in here, I'm wrapping presents. Your gifts mean so much to so many. This Christmas, show them how much you care by creating special packages for the gift wrappings of Hallmark. 
looks like Dad's been a very good boy. Somebody out there. Hi, hon. Pass. Gets it away, incomplete. There's a pass interference. Mark was thrown this time on the Seahawks. Tony Hill was the intended receiver, and David Brown, number 22, who is the only original member of the uh, Seahawks who came to the club in the original expansion draft back in 1976. He was the number one pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, in 75. Pass interference, defense, number 22, first down. Close call here. You can see him, he's pedaling back now, he's driving. The ball didn't get there quite as quick as he thought it would be, and he really just decks the guy. That wasn't that close, was it? No, it wasn't close, <laughs> it was obvious. That's an automatic first down, first and 10 Cowboys at their 37-yard line on the 11-yard penalty. Cowboys have done an excellent job controlling the football, though they haven't scored but one touchdown. Dorsett on the swing pass, 35, 40, 45. Now there is the move of a great running back. Looked like they had him, and he squirmed loose for another seven or eight yards with that little move to the inside. It's a case of a six foot five, 240 pound linebacker, isolated. Now watch Tony at the left of the screen. He's out there. He's a layoff man. He couldn't get the ball downfield. He lays it off. Now watch him come up. Now watch his feet. See his feet do that. Now look at that right there. He makes a miss. That's all there is to it. 10-yard pickup on the play. Good job Good on pass the Cowboys protection. Line. Yeah, Rafferty right there on Nash, number 72. Nice job. See, you can use your hands in pass protection today. You never used to be able to do that. As long as you don't hold with him, you can go ahead and jam with him. We talked about Rafferty before. I think he is ready for the Pro Bowl. He's been unnoticed thus far, but he's having a great year. First and 10 at the 47. This time they stop Dorsett before he gets started. Jeff Bryant, number 77, who's had a great game so far at right end and uh, is given Pat Donovan pretty well all he can handle. Right. Well, sometimes they're pulling linemen. Let's see. Now, he jumped down on the guard that time. He was on the guard, Scott, number 68. See? And they changed the defense right prior to the snap. And I making waves at We are making waves. fun with one-stop shopping at Woolworth or Woolco for your Halloween needs. Costumes from $1.83 to $3.99, like Six Million Dollar Man, Bionic Woman, Superheroes, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, and a new favorite for girls, Holly Hobby. You can get wrapped candies of every kind, bubble gum, lollipops, fun-sized candy bars. Get this Halloween record, sounds to make you shiver just $1.89. Make Halloween fun and easy. Make just one stop at Woolworth or Woolco. Work. We're testing whether Tegrin Shampoo can keep baseball star Jim Palmer's dandruff under control for three days. Tegrin Shake, day one. Looking good, so far. Tegrin Shake, day two. Tegrin's still working, but the game's not over. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Red Fox. The next Roper, they get fired and they kill to get even.
juin et juillet, tu jazz en tchèque, ma joconde, je vais être un jacquet en jujube, ta jardin jaune, ton juste au corps en jersey, ta jupette jubilée, oh, joli juni, t'es mon enfer. Dave Marish, Sander Van Oker, Sylvia Chase, Dr. Carl Sagan, Thomas Hobie, Geraldo Rivera, Harold Hayes, and Robert Hughes. I'm Hayes. I'm Robert Hughes. And Robert Hughes is not exactly a household name, Too Hughes. Right. Where do you come from? Tell us about yourself. You're Australian. Born in Sydney about 40 years ago. Started off as a journalist there, sort of art critic, political cartoonist, all-purpose literary grease monkey. Yeah? And then where? Uh, to Europe. Studied art in Italy for a few years and then uh, moved to England and um, did some work for the BBC there and freelanced and then I was hired out of there by Time magazine about eight years ago and so came here. Slipped into the country surreptitiously? Uh, yep, under a forged uh, talent. Now how about you? Where'd you get that fancy foreign accent? I From North Carolina, Hughes. We all talk that way down there. <laughs> I started there many years ago, came to New York about 25 years ago, been a magazine editor a lot of the time, a lot of that time at Esquire. Wrote a book on East Africa in the last couple of years and been concerned about conservation. Well, different work now. Let's get to it. Tonight, Geraldo Rivera reports on how greyhound racing dogs get their taste for the chase. A grizzly sport, but it has its fans. I don't think there is one thing wrong with it in any way, shape, or form. We all try to do the right thing, be honest, and up here for a lot of fun. Five years ago, Flip Wilson quit playing Geraldine to play father to his own kids. And tonight, he tells 2020 how much more it hurt him than it did then. He concluded... <coughs> ...with her saying, huh? Daddy, <coughs> Daddy, when is enough? And that was it. She never cried and never spanked her again. Today's California primary could start Governor Jerry Brown on another bid for the White House if the tax revolt doesn't get him first. We'll be talking to him via satellite about the second time around. It's probably presumptuous for anyone to run for president. It's not just a matter of, of what I want, it's what people want. And they can make very clear uh, their judgment as to whether or not uh, this makes sense or not. Imagine a nuclear bomb built. Up next, it's the Acme Hour, followed by Animaniacs on Cartoon Network. And now it's time for Go Ask Cartoon Network. Hey, Cartoon Network, why does the wily e. coyote keep shopping at Acme if all the products backfire? Did it hurt? Yeah, but I think I liked it. Can I have some more? New Snackums, the taste of Kellogg's Rice Krispies treats, blasted into crunchy flavored packed bites. A full contact snack. Snackums. Hit me! A part-time job only pays for part of his education. Support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. It continues. So you want to have fun, so you want to join a big parade, and you come to the right place? Absolutely. It's only the greatest place in the world. Macy's right here at Herald Square. And we're back with more of this miracle on 34th Street, otherwise known as Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Atop the doodlebug, Willard, as it crawls into Herald Square, is Michael Feinstein. Known as an outstanding interpreter of American song, this year Michael recorded an album just for children. He called it pure imagination and filled it with whimsical songs, like the one about the beetle with no one to hug on his way to the ugly bug ball. Once a lonely caterpillar sat and cried To a sympathetic beetle by his side I've got nobody to hug I'm such an ugly bug Then a spider and a dragonfly replied Yet you're serious and want to win a bride Come along with us to the glorious annual ugly bug ball Come on, let's crawl To the ugly bug ball and a happy time we'll have there One and all at the Ugly Bug Ball 
Then our caterpillar saw a pretty queen. She was beautiful in yellow, black, and green. He said, would you care to dance? Their dancing led to romance. Then she sat upon his caterpillar knee. And he gave his caterpillar queen a squeeze. Soon they'll honeymoon, build a big cocoon. Thanks to the ugly bug. Christmas. Only one movie will get your adrenaline pumping and keep you on the edge of your seat. Wes Craven presents Dracula 2000. Rated R. Everywhere Friday. In the world of the super hot, plasma is about as hot as it gets. It's the stuff that stars are made of. In fact, it's the stuff that 99... comedy came from the boy's parents who are very funny it's otherwise a dull movie i don't know what you think this movie is you introduce it as a comedy which i don't believe it's supposed to be then you complain you didn't take it seriously mm -hmm. uh i don't know whether you thought no, no, no. it was supposed to be a human well, comedy or obviously not. obviously it's supposed to be a comedy when a guy's throwing off gag lines like that and i think that works as for the romance and the tension between the two kids and are they uh, going to keep the baby in their love story, that no, was a complete I think this washout. Movie, this movie is really what it's trying to do, is it's trying to sh hold up a mirror to human nature. The father has lines like that, which help to mask what we find out later is a great deal of tenderness inside, and he's kind of tough on the outside. I enjoyed this movie a lot more than you did. I do believe that real teenagers would have a lot more trouble getting married and having a kid than these two would, but nevertheless, I thought the relationship between that young couple was well written, and I thought the ways that their family families were different in their approach to this baby, to this instant grandchild, was very perceptive. Well, I mean, for, I don't know how you can say that you, you think that real teenagers would have been more complex, it's only, but this script was okay. Because it's only a movie. And James. it's only an average movie. And it's hardly, I mean... Oh, Roger, if it was a good movie... You, you right now, I'm going to pay you a compliment. Okay, fine. You right now could mm -hmm. sit down and write characters and dialogue with those kids... Better you than right now film. can sit down and write a better review of this movie than you just gave. No, because you I just weren't really it. thinking about it. Gene oh, has a yeah. lot more in no. it than you give it credit no. for. No, it doesn't. Okay. When we come back, a discovery. We think it's a discovery anyway. A movie called Dear America. It's an extraordinary new film based on letters home that were written by G.I.s in Vietnam. Dear Red, anyone over here who walks more than 50 feet through elephant grass should automatically get a purple heart. On the country or everywhere around the country. But our next movie is a film that you cannot see anywhere in the United States right now, and I think that's a shame. I think this is such a special movie, so original and so powerful, that it deserves to find a distributor for theatrical release. And I think a lot of people would be very moved if they could see this film. It's called Dear America, Letters Home from Vietnam, and it consists of letters from Vietnam that were written during the war. The letters are read on the soundtrack by... <laughs> Listen up! Do you know what my friend here just called you? He called you a glass-jawed, bird-neck, no-jabbing wimp. Yeah! Oh, you gonna take that? Step into the ring. Not your typical video game, huh? Stick him, jab, move, come on. Right, there you go, left, hit him again. Uh -oh. It's easy to erase a tough stain like grass when your detergent has twice the cleaning power of this value brand. Era's got twice the detergent of this value brand, twice the power to erase tough stains. So imagine how clean Era can get your whole wash. Era, erase your stains. 
In 1999, when George Lucas won the right to move his special effects and sound companies into the Presidio, there was no longer any doubt that the Bay Area was serious about becoming Hollywood North. Welcome to The Rock. When I first moved to the Bay Area and started working in the film scene here in the early 1970s, uh, I was told by a number of people, oh, stand by, there's about to be an incredible uh, uh, shift towards making films in Northern California. Uh, well, 25 years later, I think I'm starting to see that shift happen. As you hold the office of mayor of San Francisco. One of the biggest boosters of San Francisco's Tinseltown image was the city's new mayor, Willie Brown. Brown loved movies, movie making, and Hollywood-style parties, like the one he threw for the people of the city when he was elected in 1996. He certainly brought excitement. Um, Willie Brown has always known how to play uh, politics as a form of theater. Brown was one of the most powerful politicians in the state. Before becoming mayor, he spent 15 years in Sacramento as the self-described Ayatollah of the Assembly, Speaker of the House. And no matter what people thought about the city's clogged streets, high rents, or muni troubles, everybody had an opinion of the stylish Mayor Brown. A person who has an ego that's a mile big that gets him into trouble a lot. An absolutely brilliant pro politician. Because he's better than most politicians. Because he's more interesting than most politicians. Because he's willing to say things that most politicians won't say. AIDS was one of the issues on Mayor Brown's agenda, as it had been for every mayor of San Francisco since the mid-80s. The worst moments of the epidemic hit the city in 1992 and 93. 3,600 people died from AIDS in those two years alone. But 1996 brought a breakthrough, revolutionary drugs known as protease inhibitors. For the first time, AIDS could be paralyzed. This is really incredible. You know, I really may survive. We saw what was really going to be the new kind of the new uh, face of this epidemic, which was controlling the virus. We're just 179. Save a big chicken, save a big fish. Come on in and get your wish. Nobody makes it like Long John Silver's Labor Bakes it. Long John Silver, go fish. They're ordinary kids on an extraordinary show. Yeah! To the max! Sundays at 2! Keep it clear! On YTV! For assignment, danger. Your mission, find the master spy. Your weapon, Secret Sam. Through Secret Sam's periscope, you see him, but he can see you. You locate the master spy, you talk to him, and Secret Sam's hidden camera is taking his picture right now. Suddenly you're discovered. Secret Sam fires bullets from inside the case. Secret Sam has barrel extension. Special missile sends message to your partner. Mission accomplished. You hand over real photograph. Secret Sam with periscope, message missile, rifle stock, barrel extension, even shoots through this carrying case and this real camera that works in secretly or out. Takes real photos. Secret Sam. Secret Sam. I've always had hard to whiten teeth. Well, most of us do, so brighten them up. But how? You use toothpaste, don't you? Of course, I don't want a mouthful of cavities. Any toothpaste will help prevent cavities. I want you to use Pepsodent. It's for hard to whiten teeth. Gets teeth so white, it puts pizzazz in your smile. Oh, come on. <laughs> now look, Karen. It's my business to know what makes people look good. Mm. 
George Eastman was born in 1854 in Waterville, a small village in eastern New York. He was the youngest of three children and the only boy born to Mariah Kilborn and George Washington Eastman. George's father ran two successful businesses. In Waterville, his nursery sold roses and fruit trees. Each week, he commuted 130 miles west to Rochester, New York, where he opened a business school. He taught bookkeeping and penmanship. When George was three years old, his father's health failed. He sold the Waterville farm and moved the family to Rochester. In May of 1862, when George was seven, his father died. We started out a pretty small business, but it sure wasn't small to us. We needed help, financial help. That's just what we got from the people at American Express Small Business Services. We got equipment financing for bigger stoves and faster computers, a line of credit to keep our cash flow flowing, plus the buying power to help our business grow. 1-800-SUCCESS was the best call we ever made. Like my father says, you can do anything you set your mind to, but you can't do it alone. He's right. Centuries ago, when the English began settling in America, they noticed Dutch children playing a complex form of jump rope that used two ropes. The English couldn't understand the Dutch rhymes that the children chanted. And so the term double Dutch came to be slang for something that was unintelligible. Now today, kids still do double Dutch rope jumping. And now it's not just a street game. It's a competitive sport. You can hear the call echoing through every borough of New York. Young ladies are pouring all their energy into practicing for the upcoming double Dutch jump rope championship. The American Double Dutch League was founded eight years ago by two policemen, Ulysses Williams and David Walker, as a community youth project. I'm a physical education teacher, and my first love is any type of sport. Come on! Go on! Talk to her! Keep going! I don't have any children, so these are my children, and I work with them. Anytime. Some girls have natural ability, but they're a little lazy. Some girls do not have the natural ability, but they're determined. But the most important thing is that they try. What all this training finally leads to is the World Invitational Double Dutch Tournament. I, Edward I. Koch, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim June 13, 1981, as Double Dutch Championship Day. Here you go. To all three of you, okay? May I give a little kiss? Could I? Could I give a little kiss? Welcome to the eighth annual World's Invitational Double Dutch Championship held here at Lincoln Center for the seventh year in a row. See all these beautiful people? They represent all the countries in the universe as well as New York and Connecticut. We're jazz dogs. We're from Brooklyn. If we can have these angels, then we're from Queens. We're dark and lovely, and we're from Brooklyn. All right, ladies, ready your ropes. They know everything about seasonal allergies, every symptom and every side effect, from every over-the-counter remedy they've ever tried. They know everything except this. There's a pill that could make a difference. Pick a doctor, pick a day, and ask about non-drowsy Claritin, the once daily pill for seasonal allergy relief, and discover what millions of allergy sufferers already know. Occurrence of side effects like headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth is as low as with a sugar pill. Claritin, know the difference. Um, nine. Number nine? Nine. Gwen has chosen number nine. Give Gwen number nine. Oh. Now, Gwen, all we need is the number that goes right there, and that is your car. Uh, 
six. All right. Audience, she has chosen number six. Gentlemen, light up number six. Well, you got the range, Gwen. You needed the eight to get the car. Well, you've done very well. And it's been a pleasure to have you on the show with me. Thank you, Gwen. Gwen has started things off for us. Someone else will be playing another pricing game right after this message. There. See, in that dark undercolor, automatically it picks that up so it's brighter out here than it is there. That's the I assume you've seen some of my friends here at Channel 8 in announcements on the air where they've been telling you to get smart. Let me, let me put it in non-announcement terms, what we're talking about here. And it means more than just not getting drunk and not doing drugs. It means taking charge, being in control of your life so you would never, ever risk that life or that control with drugs or drinking or any of that stuff. So if you feel the same way I do, and I hope you do, and I know you will, get one of these buttons at your high school. And believe me, it pays to get smart. Glad that one's over. We're going to move from Rocky Box into a whole other kind of fighting game. This is this one's called Whacked, and it's actually Xbox Live compatible. Why is this Xbox Live compatible? I think the only thing I can think of is Microsoft wanted a very easy game for players to jump into. The presentation, they have some kind of cute, funny, tongue-in-cheek kind of humor stuff that's yeah. like, you know, almost kind of funny and everything. Hey, you think you're evil? Well, you should try reading some of these books, like Kittens Make Great Jackets, Son of One Part Two. No, Mommy, not the clown suit. And why you'll be alone forever. Well, what they've got, it's, it's set up like a game show. You got this guy named Fantastic, and he's got this ridiculous hairdo, and he comes up and he... He's you know, all hairdo. Yeah, they've, they've come up with and some teeth. pretty... They've come up with some pretty funny lines and for him. Yeah, they've come up with some pretty funny lines for the guy, and there's a bunch of other car crazy cartoon characters. Well, my favorite's Lucy, right. who is in this really skin-tight outfit in the very beginning of the game, right. and then it just busts out, there's boobies everywhere, and they actually censor the thing with like a bar bars. throughout yeah. the whole game. That's so right. she plays the game entirely naked. With sensor bars. And, th and that's always fun. I liked Eugene, the, the penguin. I think that guy was pretty cool. But the problem is, is that overall, this game is just very, very lackluster and, and, and poor, to be Well, honest. what it is, it's a, it's a collection of mini games. And you basically, you open up curtains and doors and you walk into Barely. different rooms. Basically, all you're doing is running around in 3D and you're either playing a King of the Hill match where you're trying to take over a territory for a certain amount of time or you're collecting things for a certain amount of time or you're trying to kill people for a certain amount of time. The environments that these challenges take place in are very, very small. And the control for getting around these rooms is ridiculous. It's one of those spin the whole world around type games. You don't have any kind of like physical sort of connection to your character. Every time you spin, to turn somewhere else, the whole world spins with you. You have to get nauseous. It's really ridiculous. The other thing, too, is that they have some cool elements within the environments, like there's this one. To teach them all. Are we having fun yet? The ultimate weapons of the future. <laughs> to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning, a wide choice of cereals and the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. I'm happy to have on my left a brilliant star of television who is starting his own new show on September 27th, our old and dear friend, Steve Allen. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce uh, the young lady who just knocked him dead in the four-poster in Chicago, your good friend and mine, Jane Meadows. And now next, we have your favorite publisher and mine, uh, the head of Random House, who leaves next week with his family to go to London, Mr. Bennett Sir.
here's our very valuable and very voluble Master of Ceremonies, panel moderator, who, with this beautiful creature on my right, will be down reporting Miss Universe next Saturday night in Miami, John Charles Daly. Well, this is, as I'm sure all of you who have known the program for many years will recognize, a fine night for us. We have an old and dear friend back in an old and familiar place, Steve Allen. Steve, it's lovely to have you here, and Jane has been kind enough to grace our panel, too, in years past. And I think, actually, uh, Jane joined the family about the time she married Steve Allen. <laughs> <laughs> correctly. It's nice to have both of you here, I Thank must you. say. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we have some contestants that'll... St. John's Day. The most comfortable, casual clothes in the world are designed to help you escape it. Warm hooded Sherpas and fashion fleece from St. John's Day. Clothes that fit a relaxed state of mind. Every day's the weekend in St. John's Bay, only at J.C. Penney. Strict father, like you say. He's trying to be a good father, and that's what the movie is about. The normal kind of competition between a parent who's worried about the welfare of his child and the kid who, like any kid, wants to go to the party that all of his friends are going to. Well, I thought that uh, this stuff was very standard. I oh, mean, in other words, I, th I think When have you seen a movie like this about teenagers of any race, let alone black teenagers? Oh, I think that this is a... Can't name one. Give me a chance. Please go right ahead. Be my guest. <laughs> Go ahead, be my guest. That's the part of you that I really like. Uh, I think that the, uh, the film like Sixteen Candles or a picture like uh, Risky Business is a much more sophisticated way of presenting the same thing with the tough parents and the kids that want to have a good time. There wasn't a scene in the film that surprised me except the awkward, and I guess they're going to be awkward until we get more of them, the scenes inviting uh, the safe sex. Oh, That's unusual. See, now, how about this? How about all of the insights it has into the various, uh, the class structure within this black community? The girl who lives in public housing and whether she can be as popular as the girls who live in houses it's, with their it, families. The only thing that's fresh is the color. Coming up next, Heidi and her friends try to save themselves by climbing the Alps, and you are there. It's a wonderful view. Everyone should see it. Oh, and this is one of those movies that tries to commit suicide by hammering itself over the head with its own good intentions. The movie stars little Juliet Caton as Heidi, a Swiss girl who was sent to a private school in Italy just as World War I is breaking out. Sadly, she says goodbye to her kindly old grandfather and her best friend Peter, who is played by Charlie Sheen and who she hopes to marry someday. I'm afraid. So I will see you again. Don't be silly. You'll be back at Christmas. Life is happy in the school until the students are thrown out by the Italian army. Schoolmistress Leslie Carone keeps the girls' spirits up until the evil owner of an orphanage shows up to take the girls. Not you. You will catch your death of cold if you go out dressed that way. Put on your coats and bring a single change of clothing. No teddy bears. No dollies. The so, you think Santa will like these red and green M&M's? I don't know. I never met the guy. <laughs> he does exist! They do exist. Oh. Uh, Santa? If you don't like leftovers, why would you eat a hamburger that was made at noon, at midnight? Do hamburgers made hot and juicy fresh, right when you order them, day or night? Do Wendy's, do what tastes right. Spirals! Jeez, Lou! But yeah, I, 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 could, I have had uh, privilege to see some of the, you outtake. know, all of the outtake tapes that are rolling around, yeah. and there are just some of the. That was things. a very true one with uh, Major Roddenberry, um, mm -hmm. uh, where something happened on the set, and I unfortunately grabbed her. She started to fall or something, and uh, my hands fell in the wrong place on that <laughs> one. Gene Roddenberry never let me forget that. Right. <laughs> well, he was a good friend of yours anyway. I yes, mean, he was. You, uh, you as uh, we mentioned before, you knew him long before Star Trek was yes, uh, 
any even on paper. Um, it must have been a, a real personal tragedy for you, uh, his passing away. It was. It's uh, something that's still very difficult for me to believe. As I told you, uh, Gene was a cop. We have to uh, update just uh, one second, DeForest, I'm sorry. Yeah. We have to let you know that that Face of the Future poster has just sold out, uh, and uh, we'll see if we can get some more of those. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, that's all right. Um, I was about to say Gene was a cop, and uh, he had um, he did a show called Police Story, and I had uh, I, I met him on that show. I believe it was Police Story that I did first for him, or second. No, I did another. I did three, three, three Montgomery for him first, mm -hmm. where I portrayed a lawyer that he had written. Right. And then police story. So I had known him uh, several years before Star Trek started. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I'm, I understand that he did get to see Star Trek VI before yes, he, he did. passed on, and that's something I didn't know. I thought yeah. he had passed away before he saw the final cut, but it was nice no, that he got to he see. No, he made it, and he he thought it was excellent. Uh, it I was very pleased. Was. We have this pin right here, kind of like a medal for those of you who are Enterprise fans, 1786. It is a great way to uh, maybe give yourself a commission, a battlefield commission. Just give us a call right now and J16135 will be yours. Jim's... Uh... Introducing the Sloppy Joe, a brand new dance. From Libby's, the people who make Sloppy Joes. Just heat and eat. And swing to the beat. Nothing like it anywhere. Get beef or pork. What do kids think of it? Man, it's the sloppiest. It's got a lanolin. That's why I like new palm olive. I like to know it's in a soap. And palm olive is pure soap. Pure lanolin. It could be milder. And besides, it lasts. Watch. We turn on warm water to test another leading beauty and bath soap against new palm olive. Eleven minutes later, look. The other soap melted through, but not palm olive. New palm olive with lanolin. One mild soap that really lasts. Hey, come here. Get out of there now. Come on. Come here. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Leave your... That's it. It's over with. Come on. Too dangerous. One Sam, uh, one fall, one Robert, one uh, Coach Four, he's out of the water now. We got him out. Uh, we're going to advise him uh, not to do it again. Two four, I'm coming. Thanks. Come here, Dan. Dan. Come here. Cheese introduces a whole lot of enchilada. Two chicken, two beef for two chicken Suprema's enchiladas. Plus a hot fudge sundae. And that's a whole lot of enchilada. Cheese, a celebration of cooking. But the shirt looks dull. And that stain. I know. Where's your bleach? That's old school. Hello. What else is there? Resolve Bright and White. It's great. Forget bleach. You can use this on white and colors. Just put detergent in and add Resolve Bright and White. Wait, it goes right in? And it's safe. So detergent, bright and white, and done? You got it. Resolve Bright and White has whitening agents to give you brilliant looking whites. It also has color boost technology to safely brighten your colors. And Resolve stain seeking power removes even the toughest stains. Hey, my shirt hasn't looked this good in a long time. Rock on! The next generation laundry booster is Resolve Bright and White. When it comes to a deodorant, some people are still in the dark. Maybe it's time we threw a little light on the subject. You want a deodorant to make you mighty like a rose. But if you think that's enough, you're very, 
very mistaken. So, why don't you get next to Stop It? Stop It protects those pretties next to you. That devastating dress. That altogether bewitching lingerie. You see, Stop It is an antiperspirant too, and here's how it works. It closes down your pores like so many tiny, tiny little windows. But Stop It doesn't stop there. Stop It is gentle as a spring day. When you pick Stop It, you're picking a lotion spray with soothing, soothing ingredients. It's wonderful. Poof! There goes perspiration. Shouldn't you get Stop It? This is the special value package of Stop It spray deodorant you'll find right now on drug and cosmetics counters everywhere. It means that when you buy a regular size bottle of Stop It at the regular price, you get this generous 47-day trial bottle with it absolutely free. It's our way of making still more friends for Stop It, and it's a wonderful, wonderful bonus for regular users. Look for this special package that gives you the generous 47-day trial bottle free. But don't delay. This offer is really limited. Kick for the corner. Right-footed kicker kicking to that left corner. That's what you want to do. You want to just hook it out. Oh, he, I think it came a little too, a little too far upfield. Not uh, bad, that's nine, nine yard line. It's not bad. Not bad at the nine. Fun of 27 yards. Kansas City has the lead. They'll have the ball when we come back in just a moment. Because there will always be the last minute gift, Three first -class the first -class urgent class. journey, American Express, the anniversary yeah. surprise. Two front stalls for tonight, please. Uh, American Express card. There will always be the American Express card. There you are, sir. You've got a few minutes. Welcomed yeah. around the world. And just around the corner. Hello, American Express. Oh, Mr. Lewis. To your front store. Thank you. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Number one comedy asks, can you name Santa's reindeer? Dash it, dash it, dash it. We forgot one of them. Is he Rudolph? Rudolph! Tim Allen. The Santa Claus. Rated PG. Now playing. Sound the trumpets for the biggest holiday treat of all. The Lion King is back in theaters. It's your chance to see your favorite movie one more time. Do it again. Walt Disney Pictures, The Lion King. Rated G. Now playing at a theater near you. ああ、もう、もうグラグラですよ、トータ選手。そう、あの、これはダメージありますね。高速バックトップですか。これ以上何するやいいんだよって感じですよね。ええ。これからが我慢クラブじゃないかな。もう技じゃなくて、どっちが
今のだと不完全だけどもう勢いだけで投げちゃってるから無理やりだったからねだって完全にコーナーに立ってない人も引っこ抜いたみたいなねやっぱり山田選手気迫では山田選手が一枚上かもしれないあこれがあったっけこれでボムですよねあ返した返した返したあこれはサイクロンサイクロン Donde el tiempo no tiene valor y el futuro es presente. Nueva generación de televisores Philips K40. La nueva dimensión. By number 24, McNeil. Watch it right there. He sees an opening to the outside and leaps out of the pack. More than a 90 degree cut and makes the fine run. Two minutes. Right now, when you look inside specially marked boxes of KD, you could instantly win a Nintendo Game Boy Advance or GameCube. Of course, having X-ray glasses would help. Though there was a 227 average, composite average, on this pair. Uh, something to look for, Chris, the 63 and 64, is the oil pattern is simply this. The oil is real heavy down to a point of about 20 feet. And it's, it's a little bit lighter down here to about uh, 45 feet than dry in this area. But one thing to watch for is the scoring was abnormally low when the lanes were very slick. And right now they're very slick, so it's going to be tough match game play in the early growing. And as the lanes start hooking a little later on the championship round, I think the scores will really pick up. Beautiful breaking ball for Jeff Miller, who is from Columbus, Ohio. His parents are... Uh, here in person watching him, Linda Jerry Miller. His sister was going to come, but she couldn't, as was his grandmother, Olive, who's a 76-year-old bowler in Columbus, Ohio. That's a good point, Chris. They, uh, they came up here. It's not that far a drive. In fact, in the fog up here, it's probably the only way you can get here is the Mitchell Field Airport was closed most of the day. Now, Jeff Miller recovering after that little respite we had in the commercial. Uh, it was his time out. Let's see if he can extend his lead to 14. Crossing over and he's left with the 310 on the left lane. There, Mom and Dad, Linda and Jerry. And Jerry shaking his head as uh, everybody seems to be struggling on both lanes. And what he has to do is get the ball over here right next to the three pin and have the ball deflect into the 10. We call that the baby split. Pros should make that at least one out of every two times. Needs this to maintain the lead. Third generation of Miller bowlers in Columbus. Nope, second open frame. Lead he had is lost. It's an eight pin lead for Bellinger, who will try to come back after an open frame. Once again, the championship pair, I showed you the oil pattern, but the grain of the wood comes through on this pair, and the right hand lane 64 hooks three boards less than 63 for the right handed players. Our tournament leader, Steve Cook, has them the other way around. So the grain of the wood is very important. Let's see what Bellinger does. Oh, nice action. Strike in the fifth for Jeff Bellinger, uh, an accountant major at the University of South Carolina. The serpentine footwork of You are my enemy. And if I am going to die, I will take you with me. Duty, World at War. Radio. What radio station to listen to? So on K103, we serve up a variety of great music, enough to suit everyone's taste. Okay, okay, not everyone, but close. All day, every day, soft rock hits on K103 FM. The Dolphins are on the board at Detroit. A 19-yard pass from Marino to Joe Rose for Dan Marino, his 12th touchdown throw of the season. And Detroit's early 10-0 lead is now trimmed to 10-7. They're in the second. Back to Dick and Merlin. All right, Robert, we'll be with you at halftime, of course, for all the early scores and top scoring plays of this, the eighth weekend. We're at the halfway mark of this 1985 regular season. Craig, wide open is Largent. And that one will count, and a 
face mask. You saw Larson had the presence of mind right in the middle of his carry to go to his mask as if to say, they got me. And then he goes upfield for five more yards and a first down out at the 39. I think he got a finger in the eye. I think that's why he reached up, Dick. Looked like he reached up for his eye. The officials uh, marking quickly two penalties. And uh, the one thing that you had to believe as the Jets were stymied down there, they've got to be saying to themselves, here it goes again. Here's the jinx working on us, especially with Seattle able to come right back so quickly. There's the shot right there. And you saw him reach up to his eye. Kirk Springs, number 20 or 21. Russell Carter. OK, Russell Carter. I'll take that. Carter coming across one on one. Reached right in and got a hold of uh, Largent's eye. Meanwhile, Kurt Warner came off the field limping again. Largent's consecutive string alive. Now 115 straight games. He's caught at least one pass. Only 12 behind the all-time record. Randall Morris has replaced Warner. After the five-yard face mask penalty, Craig to Andre Hardy. And the new acquisition of the Seahawks just a couple of weeks ago, he's 233 pounds out of St. Mary's of California, has a four-yard gain, his first yardage gain in the NFL. They're trying to bust Klecko in the middle. They're putting a lot of bodies on him, and his job is to crack that cup, Dick. Watch him as he works on the double team here. Millard on the inside, Bush on the outside. Both of them have a hold of his jersey, and he just keeps plowing like a bulldozer. I think we might keep an eye on Joe Klecko. If they keep holding him like that, we're liable to Somebody. see some bodies. California, there's a phenomenal occurrence going on. And it's going on at McDonald's. Observe the earth shaking 99 cent big and tasty burger. Quarter pound 100% pure beef. Brings of onion crisply lettuce. Care for a taste? Cool, fresh tomato, tangy pickles, ketchup and mayo. Harmonized and on a toasted sesame seed bun. 99 cents every day. McDonald's. It's hip to your taste. Where does the courage come from to face the slings and arrows that show me no mercy? How did you get this show? Caraton turned it down. And the armies of darkness that show no end. Pound puppies? You have us following pound puppies. What's the matter? C-SPAN didn't have any reruns you could buy? Where does the courage come from? A little red light on top of that camera. There's sports. ノース。ノース。モンドリウッテ胃袋のあたりを押さえて苦しむチャンピオンその声谷伊藤が飛んでいったコペスイシーラ観光まだ試合は終わりません場外に落ちた豊田学美に伊藤光が飛んでいった温存されるフットスタンプ一応火を吹くかバージョン回でパワーボールだドスンという衝撃がトヨタ学美の脳を揺らしますそしてここに乗るかここに乗るか伊藤の大リングフットスタンプ場外のトヨタで担いますあの技
そしているチャレンジャー最高のチャレンジャーが今チャンスでおかいやいやいやいやいやブリッジですトヨタマナミが返した果たして新世紀だどちらを Are those Lay's jalapeno and cheddar potato chips? Yep. Did you know they're guaranteed? Nope. If you don't like them, you get another flavor free. Do I have to? Nope. <laughs> Lay's brand jalapeno and cheddar. Bet you love them or get another flavor free. This holiday, Rocco's wishing for some Christmas cheer. All he needs is a little snow. A big turnout for his party. I will ruin Rocco's party. And maybe an elf or two. You must know where to find Christmas cheer. What do you mean? Will Rocco get his Christmas wish? This is going to be the best Christmas ever. <laughs> These were all things that crept into the popular imagination. The question really is why? What underlay that? What allowed us to sort of forgive, if you will, what was this violent life and condone it and, 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 and romanticize it? Perhaps it is because pirates fulfill a fantasy forbidden to the rest of us. They lived freely, took what they wanted, and feared no one. And it is such bold characters as these who inspire us to go in search of history. It's not. It's so. It's not. It's so. It is so. Ancient tribal artifact or just a rock? Better call the History Detectives. Coming this summer, only on PBS. Hey, I can imitate almost anything, but no one can imitate the pump. <laughs> the original, the pump, from Reebok. Let's take another look at the movies we reviewed on this show. Two thumbs up for the sparkling internet romance, You've Got Mail. Two thumbs up for Maya Angelou's beautifully directed Down in the Delta. Two thumbs up for The Thin Red Line, the triumphant return of director Terrence Malick. And two thumbs up for A Civil Action. And finally, two more thumbs up, what a week, for Affliction, starring Nick Nolte as a man haunted by family demons. And except for You've Got Mail, those other four films open on Christmas Day or a few days later. Remember, you can hear our reviews on the web at cisco-ebert.com. Next week, we'll be back with reviews of more big holiday movies, including Stepmom with Julia Roberts and Susan Sarandon, and also Patch Adams starring Robin Williams. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. Ten dollars in free groceries and seven up for your family with Uncola Miracle Money. It's true. Just see the new Miracle on 34th Street movie, then stop by a Seven Up display for details on how Miracle Money can help make your season jolly. <laughs> that passionate fusion of gaucho and European influences, which met and merged in the poorer sections of Buenos Aires a century ago. Fresh homemade pie that doesn't hunger for the fresh homemade taste of Cool Whip. Cool Whip. One fresh homemade taste deserves another. 27.5. Left over right. Blood samples are checked for contaminants like pesticides and heavy metals. They're also used for genetic testing to see who his father is 
and how the family lines are connected. Those who've been through it all before, like this 38-year-old male, are very patient with the process. But this three-year-old doesn't like the doctor any more than most babies do. <laughs> Dolphins waiting in the corral are tended by volunteers. While they wait, their whistles are recorded by Leila Saig from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Dolphins begin whistling at birth and soon develop their own unique signature whistles. Researchers suspect that these signatures play a key role in dolphin communication. They may use them like names to keep track of each other in a murky underwater world. This experiment is designed to see whether one animal can actually identify the whistle of another. The white strings form a visual grid over the dolphin, so its movements can be measured later on videotape. Everybody just keep quiet, please. Through an underwater speaker, Layla plays back the signature of a dolphin known to be a close associate of the one in the corral. She alternates it with the signature of another dolphin, not as close, but from the same community. I saw it coming. A bad cold was hitting Scotty hard. <laughs> Time for vapor rub. That's not vapor rub. It's new vapor rub cream. Smell the vapors. First, we rub it on your chest and neck. Feel it working. Vapor rub's medicated vapors start to work instantly, clearing stuffy noses and quieting coughs. And see, it's not greasy. So the next day, if you're feeling that much better, maybe you should go to school. New greaseless Vicks Vapor Rub Cream. Breathe the vapors, breathe the relief. People do to clean tough stains from under the rim. Cause for some bowl cleaners, that's a tough reach. But not for Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner. Its angle neck easily goes under the rim to wipe out tough stains and germs. So look, all you need is Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner. The heavyweight with a powerful new angle on cleaning. On CCF, Double D's got hosting duty. <laughs> Hello. And check out the new cartoon cartoon, Trevor. You thought you had problems? Try a word problem so difficult, the very future of recess hangs in the balance. And then, subtract the letter G. We've also got a brand new episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Think of the money we're going to rake in. So join Double D this Friday at 7.30 for Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, only on Cartoon Network. It's landed. Ideal's new Astro Base has just landed. Look, the space lock is opening. And here comes the astronaut. He's being lowered from the Astro Base into the remote control scout car. The two space probes are being mounted for launching. The car is scanning the area. And there go the space probes. They're calling them back to the Astro Base. Mission accomplished. Ideal's Astro Base and Colonel McCauley's Space Helmet are the greatest way to play outer space. You can scan the skies, launch deep space probes, fire rockets, destroy stray meteorites. Ideal's Astro Base is at your favorite toy store. Get your Ideal Astro Base today. Maybelline introduces new Express Makeup 3-in-1. It glides on liquid smooth, dots on to conceal, finishes powder light. New Express Makeup 3-in-1. It's makeup made easy. Baby, he's born with it. Baby, it's Maybelline. Have yourself a merry, merry Christmas. Have yourself a good time. KGB file number 14449. It is Martha Dodd's file, and it contains orders from Moscow to Vinogradov in Berlin. They want him to turn his lover into a spy for the Soviet Union. The file also states that, according to our data, the mood of his acquaintance is quite ripe for finally drawing her into our work. 
The Soviets select a seasoned operative to be Dodd's contact. He passes as a reporter for the Russian news service Izvestia. Her KGB file clearly indicates why she has potential value to the Soviets. With the State Department's knowledge, Martha helps her father in his diplomatic work and is aware of all his affairs. Martha claims that the main interest of her life is to assist secretly the revolutionary cause. She was a major acquisition for the Soviets uh, because she uh, offered not only access to documents that her father left about his office, she could wander in and out at will. For the Soviets, the kind of information Dodd can access might be critical to the survival of Russia in the event of war with Germany. I think that her information uh, about the correspondence between the U.S. Embassy in Berlin and the State Department was very important because in the late 30s, the Soviets were very concerned about by which road America would go in case of of a war between the Soviet Union and uh, Nazi Germany. That's why all this diplomatic correspondence was extremely important. In an extraordinary note from Dodd herself that Vasiliev... Give her diamonds from K Jewelers. Diamonds hand-selected for extraordinary color and clarity. Choose from K's diamond pendant selection starting from $99.95. With diamonds from K Jewelers, you will make her very happy. For the first time, there's a soap booth pure and mild enough to be called pure and natural. Pure and gentle. Pure and honest. Pure and natural, through and through. It's the pure and mild soap for you. Pure and natural. Hers and his. It's the purest mild soap there is. New pure and natural. And nothing else. Just another scrap of software sifting through the hardware. One more wide track fastback in that lane and the traffic jams. From here to eternity. Mobility is not the same as freedom. Rich societies, both East and West, protect their privileges. Not from the poor, but from each other. They are afraid of the dark. Party mixers because they taste great. All this tropical fruit. And they're easy to make. But Jill likes them because they remind her of that week we spent in the islands. Scuba diving. For CBS in Milwaukee. and spit you into open graves. Slam the coffin on dead thread. Watch out, Max. The Hand. They're here. The heroic battle conqueror versus the evil double demon. The super warriors with swords that lash, missiles that crash. And if you dare, inside the warriors, the battle rages on. Mighty Max Hand and Battle Max figures sold separately. Figures do not move by themselves. My kids just cleaned the kitchen, which is why I'm cleaning the kitchen. Oh, well, I finally got them to do the pots. That was a real miracle. But the sink, the stove, <laughs> and really, with SOS, it's so simple. Live out, you know, these glorious dreams, dreams that we like to put on monuments and then kind of forget about. You could never live them out alone. I mean, by the time you came along, there was like a scene, right? You could go just fucking see how many bands. It was just like a reality. It didn't exist five years earlier than that. When you were young, did you know much about the local music scene? When I was in the, my first band, I was obsessed with finding out about everything from Discord and DC Hardcore, and like, we respect it so much. But I just remember everyone was following that, that model and making their own CDs and passing it around. We learned from that. You know, we started doing that ourselves. The way that like record labels work, 
like an antiquated process. It slowed that band up. I think that they're on their way. It's just that they gotta go touch the people, man. Figure out who you are and establish a rapport with your group of people. Music, it takes a certain amount of willpower. Not only us, any band in this town. We was like recording this music, man. We was like putting out music like every other week. And the music was like spreading like a disease. The DIY thing carries through a lot of different music scenes in DC. I'm sure you've experienced this, where you, where you run into some guy who's like a jazz guy or some funk player. You're from the punk scene, and you guys relate in a way that's very Washington, DC like language. I saw a real parallel with the go-go thing, but never could connect with them because it was a totally different world. And then we decided, like, we should play with Trouble Funk. They've headlined, we opened for them. Big Boys, Meyer Thread, Trouble Funk. Trouble Funk were interested in it because they heard about the punk scene. We were into it because we loved the go-go thing. Then there's these punk funk shows. <laughs> yeah. They both were like two underground type of sounds. And it just goes together, you know what I'm saying? We got there, this is real culture clash. I remember again, Meyer Threat playing, just looking out the soundboard, seeing the all the Trouble Funk guys just going like, like <laughs> looking at us like, what the, like laughing and pointing. It was. your pistols. It's something that you wouldn't want to repeat the Hetchetchi disaster. Howard Zahnizer and David Brower recognized that Dinosaur would serve as a litmus test for public lands as a whole. The government already had plans to develop resources in six other national parks, including Glacier and the Grand Canyon. The debate boiled down to a choice between wilderness and progress. Hydropower is the only source of energy that is renewable completely. It has no elements of smoke, heat, acid rain, none of the debilitating effects of burning coal or oil or, or, or the atomic. Hydropower is the only clean source of energy. So why wouldn't the public want every possible kilowatt generated from this source of power? I remember as we began that, one of Aldo Leopold's sons, Luna, told me, well, Dave, stick to your bird watching. The Bureau of Reclamation has all the experts. It was good that we didn't stick to our bird watching, that we did know how to call on other experts who were more objective than the Bureau of Reclamation was, which was naturally in favor of its projects. Brower and Zahnizer challenged the Bureau of Reclamation's geological studies. Not only was the dam unnecessary, it wasn't even feasible. The rock walls were too unstable to support the giant structure. The public immediately responded. Mail to Congress ran 80 to 1 in favor of the Wild River. Howard Zahnizer personally persuaded 120 congressmen to change their votes. Support for the dinosaur project crumbled. For the first time in history, preservationists had won a national battle against progress. I think the reason why dinosaur, the dam at Dinosaur was blocked, but the dam at Hetch Hetchy was not blocked, was that recreation in wild land was becoming more and more important as we move into the 50s. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after these messages. Adult Swim and Comedy Network or Cartoon Network are going to be watching this like, why do we pay them again? I know. 
This is one of the sets that actually appears in the special. This was our Death Star set, which was uh, excitingly broken up into two pieces so we could film on two separate stages. That's probably more information than anybody really needs to know, but for those of you who build sets at home, I bet you find it interesting. You know, more information that people need to know is the fact that I picked up anal cream from Matt this morning and then helped him <laughs> apply it to all the inflamed areas. Thanks that might caring. be more info, yeah. <laughs> but now you know. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> yeah, I do. Favorite Fruity Pebbles with me, John Cena, captain of Team Fruity. It's part of my complete breakfast. Are you fan enough to join me? Fruitacular. Mmm. Now at TeamPebbles.com, you can sign up with parents' permission. Pebbles, which flavor is yours? Coco! You've never seen a camcorder like the Sharp View Cam. The viewfinder gone. Replaced with this LCD view screen. Gretzky scores! Gretzky scores? Let's go to the replay. Then, play it back instantly with color and sound. The Sharp View Cam. An absolute original. And now you can score big. Get up to a $200 rebate when you buy a Sharp View Cam. Call 1-800-B-SHARP and take a shot. What happens when a helper monkey gets too helpful? At what point does simple assistance cross the line to become annoyance or even oppression? Having a helper monkey was great at first. Since Spencer arrived, we've finally been able to give the interns the treatment they deserve. show off his intelligence in unsettling ways. Oh, checkmate. But, but, but you're a, oh, oh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, checkmate, sure thing. Yeah, well, well, I guess you're the smart one here at the table. All right, one more. All right, fine, checkmate, yeah, okay. You have a tail, okay. I just have fingers and a brain. Spencer then turned his considerable intellect towards the betterment of his fellow X-Play cast members. Through a simple course of negative reinforcement, he quickly cured Link of his drinking problem. I'm all clean and sober. My life has no meaning. Zelda. <laughs> Zelda? Next, he developed an ingenious microchip implant to stop Raddy's foul language. Suck it, ah! Oh, oh, you be ah! Kill me. Kill me now. And hey, who wouldn't want a super intelligent capuchin around the office? I mean, what could go wrong? We found out when we gave him access to our secret X-Play lab. Aw, monkey in a lab coat. How cute. Yeah, cute like a fox. In mere hours, Spencer had cracked the monkey genome and started performing illegal stem cell research. He quickly found the cures for prehensile tail cancer, banana Alzheimer's, and RPG radiculopathy. Then... It's time to answer the call of a winning team. Climb aboard with Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Weekdays at 4 on Fox 24. And that's the 6 o'clock news. See you at 11. The news doesn't stop at 7 o'clock, and neither do we. One station covers all the breaking news live. Today's four. Bringing new drama out on the streets and in the theater. Excitement on the ground and in the air. On one station, the 11 o'clock news is more than just a repeat of the 6 o'clock news. This is New England's Nightcast at 11. Today's four eyewitness news, where you don't miss a beat. Tested methods of animal observation. It wasn't really a very big party. Some of the earlier expeditions had been 300 people, and Slick decided that, that was too big, um, that it scared away animals. And if he really wanted to hunt Yeti, which were very elusive creatures, he wasn't going to send a whole bunch of people in there. Slick broke his expedition into two small crews. While one crew looked for Yeti footprints in the high snow country, the other searched the dense and uncharted jungle valleys.
ただいまのお決まり手は寄り切り寄り切って千代の富士の勝ち初日にあたり通信でご挨拶を申し上げます本日ここに三月場所を開場いたしましたところ初日早々各も盛大にご来場くださいまして誠にありがたく心からお礼を申し上げます for the latest from the Fox 4 Newsroom. Coming up, a strange jail escape. Plus, three Texans, a close encounter with a UFO. Tonight's text files report. And remembering our past, reflections of JFK tonight at 9. Make a break, make a break for McDonald's. Every Wednesday at McDonald's, you can enjoy a hamburger for just 29 cents. Sundays, pick up a 39-cent cheeseburger. Mondays, get a six-piece chicken McNuggets for just 79 cents. And now, every morning, enjoy a 99-cent sausage McMuffin with egg. This is a classic and a great treasure, and I'm very sorry to tell you that I broke this in the mail. I shipped it from, Chicago, from uh, Tacoma to, to uh, Chicago, and the poor heart, it arrived all broken, so I glued it back together, and I can never use it again. Here's, it's dull. It should ring. This is a Kugelhoop, Kugelhoop mode, a crown cap from Germany, and you make a beautiful cake in this. Oh, you can mold all sorts of things. And when it's served, it's very, very dramatic with all of these ridges. It's fun to put food in these molds. It's just great fun. And I have some uh, English molds. For instance, this is a, these are all pudding molds. This is an old one from England. You see the ridges? And then I have these, these kind of standard old English molds for making puddings. You put the pudding in and then seal this, then it sits in a pot of hot water, and you make suet puddings and that sort of thing. You have them all different sizes. Incidentally, Hall, Hall China is making these again, the old English style. And I just think they're gorgeous. They've got a great big one, too. I don't know what you'd put in there, kind of elephant roast or something. It's gigantic. All right, we'll move these and show you some others. Then from England, uh, you can also find, if you go into antique shops, you can find glass molds. These are beautiful things because the top has such an interesting pattern. You see these? Let's see, I have a fourth one, third one here. I shipped all of these from, uh, from uh, old European antiques in Tacoma. We have a big warehouse, and he brings this stuff in all the time. It would be great to put big olives in each one of these. I've done that for some of them. We'll, we'll look at, take a look at them. All right, the other thing you need when you do this sort of thing is a can of, of, of uh, Pam. I almost said Spam. I don't want Spam. Molded Spam? <laughs> Let's try that. No, uh, I have a can of Spam, and you spray everything so that it'll come out. In the old days, of course, you didn't have Spam, or Pam. We had Spam, I remember that. But we didn't have Pam, so it was much harder to do this, but these are easy. All right, and finally, the classics. Now, we're talking bucks, dears. We're talking bucks. These molds uh, are classic English molds, but they're made in Turkey. This, this one is, these are very expensive. We're talking about a lot of money, but you see the quality. You'll have these forever. It's very, very thick copper, and you'll notice that they're not, they're not a cheap copper, or a cheap tin electroplate. These are copper wash. You can see where the, where, the, where the tin wash. Here's another games and sports update. If you think school is a lot of work, imagine going to school and playing Major League Soccer all at the same time. The Chicago Fire's Demarcus Beasley did that for two years. 
At his high school graduation last month, he got an award for being a star athlete and student. Juggling soccer in school wasn't easy. DeMarcus had to miss two games and take some slack from his teammates. DeMarcus' teammates don't bring books to practice, but do any of them have an award in their name? For more on this high school hero, go to gas.nick.com. Rob Fuse winning it with first blood. Reese will come back kind of anticlimactic at the finish, but Reese found the problem that's been seen several times here tonight, and that is the dust on the floor, but there is the man of the hour, your winner tonight. Your top eliminator is first blood. Mike, on the replay, I think we'll see that... Uh, and they're no doubt happy. Yeah, Fuchs, watch, watch uh, the A&P of Rocket. He kind of backs off, and Fuchs takes advantage of it. Well, Reese is in trouble. He knows he's out of bounds. He hits, you know, he hits the brakes and gets it stopped. Uh, Rob staying away from the Rocket, both of them doing a great job of keeping the truck out of trouble as of such, not to hurt him, and goes on for a, a good, easy win. But this young gentleman deserves it. He's really been out working hard, and he's a fine driver. He's got a fine monster truck, and he gets congratulations, and they're well-deserved. The winner tonight is First Blood. First, one second's count. Well, the story is written now for the Metrodome. First Blood is the winner. And the Ford Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Association Truck and Tractor Pull Championships, featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks, has been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Now speaking for my partner, Mike Galloway, and our producer, Mike Carbon. Dave Thomas is thinking about the perfect cheese for Wendy's new chicken sandwich. So I'm thinking mozzarella. Really? My first choice would be Munster. It had to have just the right flavor. How about camembert? Over a mozzarella? No way. Dave, think Gouda. And it had to be delicious. Introducing Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme. A whole breast filet cooked golden brown. Mozzarella and a creamy Parmesan sauce. Still think Gouda? Not anymore. Who's here? It's shocking. For the best in fun and adventure, don't miss Merry Melody starring Bugs Bunny and Friends. Weekday afternoons on Fox. Deep the Cat here, inviting you to join all your favorite Fox friends for a merry Christmas Saturday. Yippee! All morning long, we'll visit with Santa, hang our stockings, and trim our trees. So come celebrate the holidays and watch Merry Christmas Saturday. Get into the holiday spirit with two new movies from Disney. Critics call Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas the perfect Yuletide stocking stuffer. And Winnie the Pooh's Seasons of Giving, Pure Pooh Magic. Yahoo! Bring the magic home today, only on video. Dans le nouveau banania, y'a pas que du cacao. Ya! Y'a de la banane, trois fois rien de miel. Ya! Et y'a des céréales. We eat it as dessert. I don't know about your people. <laughs> no, it's not. We're more like a force fight. <laughs> Would it be cream cheese that he's being sculpted? Wrong. <laughs> it's not cream cheese. But it is a food. Yeah, we wouldn't yeah. do anything yeah. that silly. Yeah, it's a food. Would, uh, <laughs> would we have the food in our house every day? 
Ordinarily, buddy? But are you Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> you say it wouldn't help me, I'll be very upset. <laughs> yes, I'm Jewish. Would I have it in my house? Not every day, no. no. You couldn't take it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Two down and two to go. Any it, but is it something that belongs in every good good Jew's home or a closet Jew's, as uh, anybody might be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, is it something like chopped liver? That's exactly what it is. Chopped liver. Yeah, it is. Okay. Right on the How can it be a, a better hint if I were to say you find it in a Jew's house who has high cholesterol? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he is being sculptured, is sculptured at this moment in Chopped Liver. Before we see the remarkable work of art itself, we're going to introduce you to the sculptor, Mr. Jim McNallis of Covina, California. Jim? <laughs> I'm sorry, we sure can. Uh, Jim actually is a very gifted professional sculptor. You've done busts of uh, various famous people, haven't you? Comedians, entertainers, politicians. Such as? Oh, Frank Sinatra, President Nixon, Stan Laurel. Terrific. Are we going to show any of those? Do we have a moment to show some? Yes, just roll that right in. Thank you, Johnny Olson. Come right in, John. Isn't that terrific? Stand up. Yeah, come on, bud. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, in a minute, you not only can stand, you can eat uh, shortly. Aren't these terrific? You want to identify all of these? Well, from left to right, Steve, they're uh, President Nixon, Vice President Agnew, uh, Wallace, Muskie, Senator Kennedy, Senator Humphrey, and uh, Mayor Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Very remarkable work indeed. Of course, they were not made of... The number one gram snack in honey, cinnamon, and chocolate. at mid-ocean ridges. As new crust spreads apart, it meets another continental plate. One is subducted beneath the other. Friction melts the rock, creating intense pressure, which forces the melted rock to the surface as a volcano. Before we came in here and got on the ground, we imagined that this was going to be a very sterile place where everything had been destroyed and everything was dead. And what we found instead was that a lot of life, a lot of organisms, a lot of biological structures were left behind here. Look over here, Jerry. We've got some really interesting things here. It's so what we had here was an incredible richness of things to look at. And every time we turned around, there was something new and exciting and different and surprising. Now, this is something new here, and a stink current's come up here. Uh, and here it is in bloom. We were being blindsided all the time. And I described it as being like a kid in a candy store because there were so many things going on here. Uh, and I always loved the way in which we'd develop our ideas and concepts and theories and then would come in here and nature would just knock them on their pins, you know. Uh, it wouldn't be that way at all. Now, more than a decade later, the St. Helens landscape is transformed. Dandelion, vine maple, fireweed have all blown in on the wind and thrive on decayed trees. For 10 years, biologist Charlie Crisofuli has been trudging through the St. Helens blast zone, trapping animals and charting their recovery. He clips the toenails so he doesn't count the same ones twice. Deer mice were found in the first summer. Too far from the edge of the blast to have walked in, they had somehow served. Weather facts says heavy snow this morning. I gotta get to the station. Plus, blow. Morning man Bill Lacey is learning firsthand about weather facts from 930 WBEN. I don't believe this. With the latest traffic conditions. The skyway is closed in both directions. Uh, Official school and business closing. Rescue dog closed for business today. You too? I don't believe this. And Buffalo's exclusive weather facts forecast. There's even a chance of lightning, believe it or not. No. 
Yes. News 930 WBEN. Next, Bill Lacey on the Good Morning Show. Believe it. APE 95.1 has changed. WAPE 95.1 is now playing today's best music with no rap or hard rock. Today's best music means WAPE plays hits from Janet Jackson, R.E.M., Mariah Carey, and Duran Duran. They're so much better now. WAPE has improved now that it's changed. Listen to the new sound of WAPE 95.1. Welcome back. Let's go right to Taylor, who has a phone call for us. Taylor. We're going to simmer down, fellas, and take a call from Adam in uh, somewhere. Adam, somewhere. <laughs> go ahead. Um, my big question is, uh, for people who do not have a choice in operating systems, like Dell and so forth, w uh, from Dell and so forth, would they be able to download Internet Explorer and Windows Media Player if they prefer it, instead of having to use whatever they've put in there instead? Well, I don't know what, uh, I'm not absolutely sure what he means by that, but Jonathan, uh, that's, that, yeah, that's affirmative. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you can always download an Explorer, and people download upgrades to it now, certainly. The issue isn't so much about the little browser. Um, that's like talking about Notepad. The issue is the presence of the underlying technology in the operating system that software developers like me use to develop software, uh, you know, for Windows. And keeping that in the system is, is what's important to us. All right. Uh, Mark, uh, and by the way, I should mention, actually, let me mention the both of you. The reason that I'm so surly today is because last night I was working on a Win2K system looking for a network setting, and I found myself drilling down a million option menus and clicking on a million tabs and then going deeper into advanced tabs to find one little box to click, and it took me an hour and a half to find it. Doesn't make it, you know, people too pleased about, you know, the way things are organized over there. It would be nice to see what the source code looks like, just so maybe somebody could go in there and fix it. Anyway, Mark, uh, we have an email. Never mind. Yeah. We go right Let's back go to, to Taylor. Victor, who writes, is it possible that Microsoft will alter their so source code to cover any violations that could be done for other software products and our privacy? Well, I don't know, Mark. W would Microsoft, uh, if, say, the source code was looked at and somebody said, hey, you know, there's some problems here, would Microsoft do, do anything about it? Would they be obliged to? Well, they wouldn't be obliged to, but, um, you know, I'm sure they're always looking to, I mean, in at least some cases, I will give them the fact that they probably do try to comply with the law. So, um... Now, back to our program. They came in search of Count Chocula cereal. The double chocolatey part of a complete breakfast. It's dark up here. Look, eyes. Moving eyes? Spooky eyes. Scary eyes. I love bats. That's why my new batty boxes have eyes that go batty. They move. Count Chocula. Now you can look for boxes with eyes that go batty. They'll be looking for you. This dish went on a diet. It lost 500 calories. It's time for cooking with Pam. How do you put a dish on a diet? Cook with low-calorie Pam. Look, oil adds 500 calories to this platter of eggplant. Pam adds practically none. And calories lost here won't be gained here. So when you diet, put your dishes on a diet. Use Pam instead of oil or butter. Start with Pam. Your recipes turn out light. At Eastwood Insurance, you can save a lot of money on car insurance because they have the lowest rates available. I called Eastwood Insurance at 1-800-468-LESS and within five minutes I had a quote. The law says I have to have auto insurance. At Eastwood, I can make low monthly payments and still have money left over. If you're paying more than $50 a month for auto insurance, call Eastwood Insurance now at 1-800-468-LESS. Of milk. Two eggs, and you notice my eggs are at room temperature. Always, because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to have trouble blending them. And then we need uh, two tablespoons, oh, I have to get my peanut oil, two tablespoons of peanut oil. Those are cooking nicely. One, two, all right. And I need some, uh, a little bit of uh, salt, which I have to go get again too, huh? Just a, just a smidgen of salt. The oil, the two eggs. Now we need one cup of flour. Girl who can't somersault, sent in by Robin Martin from Phoenix City, Alabama. I'm going to do a somersault. Here I go. 
Here I go. Woo! Yo-Yo Bookshelf Boys, sent in by Alex Jordan from Glenview, Illinois. Upside Down Costume Man, sent in by Kathy Gross Singer from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. <laughs> well, it's sad but true, there can be only one winner, but to help console the runners up, we have consolation prizes to console them. Our third place winner will receive an RCA Pro Edit camera just like this one. And our second place winner will receive an RCA home entertainment unit with a 31-inch monitor and a super VHS recorder, just like this one. No bait and switch here. And all this is going to happen because our studio audience is going to decide which is their favorite of the three semifinalists by locking in their votes right now. One of these three will be our $10,000 winner. Girl who can't somersault. Yo-Yo Bookshelf Boys. Upside down costume man. Who will it be? We'll find out in a moment. with my hair except spray club for men that's right spray club for men and it's only two easy steps step one place the cranial template on the skull <laughs> step two spray <laughs> there it is my confidence is restored i look great i feel great and nothing holds me back for 29.99 you can have it all spray club for men and it's ozone friendly. This is gonna be good. Not too clever, but good. What I'll do is I'll climb on top of the refrigerator, and then I'll wait for my friends, and when they come in, I'll jump down and surprise them. There, I'm completely hidden, and like a jungle cat, I wait to leap down on my prey. Oh, I hear them coming now. Oh, yeah, I hear Timmy and Diane and Dad and Bruce. And, and Dad! Whoa! <laughs> Wait, wait, I can explain, Dad. Don't ground me, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll wash your car, I'll wash the house, I'll wash you. How do you follow something like that? I don't know how you do it, but I know how I'm gonna do it. Here are the last three finalists with the same kind of lack of order that this show is famous for. <laughs> I've never played with such fluidity. But boy, are my paws sweating. Cookie crisp, cookie crisp, merry cookie crisp. Little cookies, lots of chips that you can't resist. Cookie crook and chip in a one dog open sleigh. Crashing through the snow, laughing all the way. Bells on top got free. They're not very bright, but being that it's Christmas time, I'll give them some tonight. Cookie Crisp is the merry part of this complete breakfast. Now there's a Marvel Spider-Man trading card. Three inside specially marked boxes of Cookie Crisp. Together, so happy together. How is the weather? So happy together. This is the turtles that everyone remembers, but there was much more. Top 10 hits Eleanor, It Ain't Me Babe, and You Showed Me, and the story of how a bunch of guys from Westchester High School in Los Angeles became one of America's top bands. We met Bob Dylan, we met the Beatles, and we even played the White House. But while everyone knew our hits, nobody really knew what it was like to be a turtle. It all started from humble beginnings as a neighborhood surf band. Sit back, watch. They were unique. All four of them were different and unique. Uh, the quietest one uh, in my memory uh, would be Al Nichols. He was the quietest. 
at least in my class he was. Uh, Chuck was the sportsman, the uh, swimming star. Mark was the clown. Howard was the uh, sort of stability of, of, of the force. Howard had a, f a fabulous voice for a, a young man of 16 or 17 at the time. Choir probably added a dimension to us as a, as a local band of singers that a lot of the other bands didn't have as a part of their uh, career even in high school was we learned about part singing. We learned that you could put different people on different notes and we didn't really understand music that well at the time to know we exactly what we were doing but we knew that we could add different notes and sing in parts because we were singing already in parts in a cappella choir. I've always been attracted to funny people so when he asked about joining the group especially when he answered that he had no particular skills at all. I was sold, you know, I thought the band could really use this guy in it, you know, a little levity, something to lighten up the situation because it was not a, a happy band. It was a band that was concentrating on, on the music, on getting it and getting it right. And, uh, and having Mark in the band, it just turned into a fun situation. Mark would get up on stage and he'd sing a couple of duets with Howard. You know, this is, this is the early days of the Crossfires. And, uh, Al would go, well, that's real nice. And Howard would keep pushing for uh, Mark to be a permanent member, and Al would say, absolutely not. This guy doesn't play an instrument. I'm not going to pay him. We were a surfing band, so essentially we were playing pretty much about 90% instrumental music. And Wouldn't you rather be at the ballpark? Sure beats working. Sun, the crowd, and the ball game. <laughs> Baseball hot dogs, got to be. Join in on the Stampede to Pilot Field. Then sit back and enjoy the ball game, hot dogs, and a little summer sunshine. Get your tickets early so you don't miss a hit. Tickets available at the Pilot Field Ticket Office, Ticketron, or call to charge. Bison Baseball makes my day. Buffalo Bison's Baseball, where every game's an event. Emergency City. The bank's being robbed. Turn on the siren. Close the road, and you've got them. You save the day in Emergency City. With real sounds, vehicles sold separately, some assembly required, batteries not included. New from Matchbox. Tomatoes are 100% natural. That's why Hunt's is the only leading brand to flash steam every tomato. So every meal is the best it can be. Hunt's, perfectly natural, perfectly delicious. Everybody is getting on my nerves. Everybody is stupider than me. Why won't you do things the way that I do? I am right and you are wrong. Me! <laughs> Hello and welcome to me. Well, before getting started tonight, I have a little message for Harvey Erickson. Harvey wrote to me last week and suggested that I do a show on clowns because clowns always make him, and I quote here, laugh and feel happy. <laughs> Harvey, 
I don't care if a clown makes you rise up from the dead and sing the Messiah. <laughs> Clowns are ugly. Excuse me for just a moment. Okay, who is running camera three? Is that you, Dave? I thought so. Well, how many times have I told you not to shoot me so tight? Back off! <laughs> okay, well, it's time now to bring out my wonderful, wonderful guest. She is a world-class pastry chef, a true culinary artist, Please welcome Carol Green. Well, Carol, Carol, it is so nice to have you on the show. It's very nice to be here. Thank and you. And let me just say that this is a beautiful, exquisite cake. It really Thank is. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what are you going to do for us today? Well, using a light buttercream frosting, I'm going to demonstrate how you make rose. Oh! Okay. It's quite simple, really. Uh -huh. uh, you start by using a number nine tip. Oh, no, no, you, you, mean, a number, you mean a number six tip. Oh, uh, no, no, that's a number nine tip. <laughs> uh, Carol, I've decorated a few cakes in my day, and for Rose, it is a number six tip. Oh, oh, you can use a number six tip for the leaves of the Rose, but the Rose itself is a number nine Carol, tip. Carol, for the Rose itself, it is a number six tip, please. <laughs> number six. Mm -hmm. well, I I hate to disagree with you, oh, but no, I've Oh, no, I'm starting to get irritated. Oh, no, not a good sign. <laughs> it makes you cool as your attitude, your inner self. It's not the way your hair is cut. It's not the clothes you wear. Not the clothes. Not the clothes. <laughs> it's not what you drink. You got that right. You got Pepsi for me? Who knew? There's no easy way to uh, break off any relationship. I think when you first start dating, they ought to give you three get-out-of-relationship-free cards. You know what I mean? So you could just go up to the person and go, uh, here you go, I'm sorry, I'll uh, grab the tennis racket, don't even bother to get up, have a good one, sorry. Which is fine, unless of course the person you're in the relationship with happens to have a eight more months of guilt, torture, and pain card. Uh, hold up, I got a little something for you. The public clamored for long-distance service, but the challenge had frustrated inventors and businessmen for 39 years. The science required to send the human voice clear across the United States simply did not exist. The first breakthrough occurred with the invention of a signal amplifier, allowing Bell's New York lines to reach Chicago, 600 miles away. So in 1892, Alexander Graham Bell, then 45, was summoned from his Canadian retreat to place the first New York to Chicago call. Bell was so taken with the event that it became the only time in his life that he allowed himself to be photographed speaking into his adventure. The wiring of America was well on its way, and hello operator, give me long distance, entered the language. The Bell Company set long-distance phone rates at about one-fifth the price of a railroad ticket. In 1910, the New York to Philadelphia train fare was $4.50. A call was 80 cents. Demands that the phone reach further and further continued to grow. And finally, by adapting a vacuum tube that was originally invented for radio, AT&T had the equipment. A line from New York to San Francisco was promised for January of 1915. As with the railroad and telegraph that had come before, connecting the two coasts would be an enormous task. An army of workers, mostly on foot or horseback, invaded the mountains and deserts, 
braving rain, cold, and blizzards. The Mammoth Project took over a year. 14,000 miles of copper wire and 130,000 telephone poles were needed to link the country. AT&T's management knew how risky a public coast-to-coast -coast call could be. They hired 15,000 men, five men for every mile, spaced out across the country to be on the ready to fix any problems on the line. It's back, Cincinnati. Arby's famous beef and cheddar sandwich is only 99 cents. And now we're making our curly fries even better. Introducing Arby's cheddar fries. You never had soup in a cup like Lipton Cup of Soup. Introducing new country-style cup of soup. Four new soups, each with something extra, like country vegetables or big noodles. Oy. Thicker broth. So creamy. Even croutons. Croutons? Oh, I mean, I never. You never had, you never had soup in a cup like Lipton. Country style. Cup of soup. People from different cultures living and working side by side and doing their best to understand each other. That's what Penang seems to be all about. You'd better take my advice. A bulletproof cockpit doesn't help you go faster, but it sure comes in handy when you're under attack by crazed, gun-wielding motorcyclists. Speed Racer will return. Introducing Leatherhead, the evil Cajun Gator. Leatherhead, these are your targets, the friends of the Ninja Turtles. Yusaki Yojimbo, the Samurai Rabbit. Casey Jones, the Sports Warrior. And Metalhead, the robotic turtle vending machine. Destroy them! Whoa, better watch the old blood pressure, Shredhead. Now you can get a pop-up display stand inside specially marked packages of turtle figures. Great for displaying turtles when they're not eating pizza. From Playmates. It really works, yes it works. Head and shoulders. Cools your dandruff, gives your hair body too. Head and shoulder shampoo. She loves the lather of a head and shoulder shampoo. It really, really, really works, yes it works. Head and shoulders. Cools your dandruff, gives your hair body too. Head and shoulder shampoo. We have behind that curtain a new dining room set. Beautiful patio furniture. Beautiful modern furniture. You have a beautiful room set. Let's make a deal. Burnishing the fun. Weeknights at 8 on Buzzer. I wish we could give it to you, but it isn't that kind of a show. Let me say before we get deluged with telephone calls that this is a one-of-a-kind item, the only white meat dress in existence. It is made of 90 skins, and panel, as you can see, the dress has a matching coat. And uh, what about the coat? It is trimmed with... Uh, it also is a white mink trimmed with empress chinchilla. Yeah. And it uh, sells for $20,000. Isn't wow. that nice? Remind me to tell Tony when he... Oh, sure, I will. He'd kill me. I think everybody will agree. Pardon? The whole, it's 38, you said 18, but the coat's extra? Yes, yes sure. 18 for the dress. <laughs> Not with coke. <laughs> no. At the store, they have free parking, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, thank you for modeling this for us. Uh, we have a few minutes to look at the gifts that you brought the panel, and they can keep them as long as they can figure out what they are. That's huh? right. I mean, if we can't figure it out, we can't keep them. We can't oh, we might change our mind. I don't know. We make it generous. It's the Christmas we get done. The first one is for Bill. Right. There you are. Bill's a great gadget man. Bill, guess what this is? Ah, uh, <clears throat> that's a miniature of Jane Mansfield's bathtub. 
extreme miniature. It's a, it's a an instrument of some kind. You play it. You play it? Yes. May I have the beverage, please? Well, there's a story in my life. <laughs> no, first of all, I'm turning off. Did you it off. break it? I didn't do it. I'm oh, yes, you broke it. You did too. You broke it. I'm sorry. Broke it. I'm sorry. It's That's all right. It's it's like it might ball. work. But I think it did. Hey, Mr. Spims takes you on a great adventure with a hero named Gulliver. This is the Hunter Gatherer Report with Og Brokaw. Good evening. Tonight, Bo Arg of Parched Gulch was seriously stung by a swarm of bees. Apparently, Arg was digging into their nest with his bare hands instead of using a long stick, as required by the Honey Commission. Also tonight, the chief of the Big Rock on the Hill Tribe insists that the dog people are foraging in his tribe's berry patch. A spokesman for the dog people, who prefer to be called the pronounced incisor people, countered with sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never harm me. No doubt an expression that will live in infamy. <laughs> now live from the split tree clearing is Bat Stomper with the weather. Bat? Thanks, Og. The weather for the savannah is going to be hot, hot and dry, and that is good weather for bird snaring. A hot wind is being forced over the area of the big food by the wind god, and the sun god is pursuing his daughter once again, and that should cause some excitement over the next couple of days. Looking at the map, we see that the antelope pelters, who live over the big hill, will probably have the same weather we have until the end of the rainy season next moon. Back to you, Og. Thank you, Bet. Now let's check in on sports with Zim Dwami. Thanks, Og. The hunter-gatherers handed a solid defeat to the big people today in a best-of-one rock throw. The big people got a lot on their pitches, but they had their control problems, killing seven of their own players with wild tosses. <laughs> Near the valley, the berry pickers inched by the bark strippers in a very close game of branch baskets. Look for their next matchup in half a moon at the Place of Loud Noises. Og? Well, for Bat, Zim, and all of us here on the Big Hill, I'm Og Brokaw. That's it. Is this the key to your car? <laughs> if so, consider the Honda Civic DX hatchback. It's full of space. The key is its long lines and innovative engineering. It keeps you from feeling packed in. Even the rear seats slide back and recline. You know, this small car is so big, it's simply uncanny. With the cordgrass and the pickleweed. This is a very rich area. The grasses grow up in the spring and summer, and the grasses die as grasses do and, and lay in mats on the mud surface here. And then, as the tides come in and out through these tide channels, they carry this, this dead, decaying grass, which we call detritus, out into the estuary. Here at the edge of the salt marsh, we see the, the grasses competing with the mussels for space. And these animals are closed up and when the tide is out, and then when the tide comes in, they filter the water and draw out of the water the food particles as they float by. You can see the mud snails uh, covering the mud flat here. Under the mud are clams and other animals eating on the, on the dead grasses and other materials. In this one system, you see the grasses go out as dead material onto the mud flat, is taken up by the animals in the mud flat, and finally those animals are eaten by the birds. It's clear that this is a very productive... Superman, Spider-Man, yeah, they're cool, I guess, but I like my heroes a little bit more real. There's only one October, and it's here on TBS. You're a fan. Watch like one. The postseason is on TBS.
And I suppose we'll be back doing it some more, but I couldn't tell you why, honestly. <laughs> and you'll be out next time. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Now again, Tom Dargan. Well, Ted, uh, at this moment, while Jack Regis is busy with his crew getting ready for this competition, we'll go to Chuck Herring and pit control. The running of the World Series of Powerboat Racing, the Gold Cup, is the climax to Seattle's annual Seafair celebration, which now in its ninth year is gaining nationwide attention. On another score, the Seafair City will receive worldwide notice in a few years. During the past week, leading scientists from all over the country have been making plans here in Seattle for the Century 21 Exposition, the World's Fair of Science, slated to be held here in Seattle in 1961. Now, whether you're watching this telecast in Buffalo, New York, or Nashville, Tennessee, or Kansas City, if you're planning a visit to the Pacific Northwest next year, Seattle Seafair is an event you shouldn't miss. Here's a sample of the fun and excitement of this year's annual maritime frolic. Seattle donned her royal cloak of fun and gaiety 10 days ago with the rowdy arrival of a cutthroat gang known as the Seafair Pirates. Led by Davy Jones and his right-hand man, Captain Kidd, the Buccaneers put to shore at Alki Point in the historic western section of town. The Pirates, taking time out from chasing pretty girls, displayed their disdain for Seafair ruler King Neptune Rex IX by putting the torch to the flagship of his royal fleet. Neptune, like any self-respecting king, could stand the antics of the pirates only so long before descending from his home atop the famed Olympic Mountains to do something about the outlaws. And seafair fun begins in earnest. The new Neptune, in real life Price Sullivan, received his scepter of office during coronation ceremonies at Seattle's beautiful and unusual outdoor aqua theater. Every king must have a queen, and this year, a lovely blonde 18-year-old high school student, Judy Paulson, was chosen as Seattle's Queen of the Seas. Her reign will continue for a year. Seattle is a city of international influences, and this character is an important part of the seafair festivities. These are the International Scottish Games, track and field events featuring athletes from the U.S. and Canada, one of the few athletic events in the world staged against a background of bagpipe music. The Seafair City's Chinese community stages one of the most colorful and energetic celebrations, the serpentining 102-foot-long dragon, the exquisite costumes of the Orient, add to the exciting international... Home of Wendy's, we love kids. The average family has 1.9, but we don't think that's enough. And that's why we go to Wendy's for their crispy chicken nuggets. They're all white meat, juicy and delicious. Plus, at just 99 cents, you still have some money in your pocket. Of course, someone might ask, why have all those kids? Thanks, Mommy. But that's a silly question. The 99 cent chicken nuggets at Wendy's, it's better here. I seemed to escape it all and was seemingly doing incredibly well in business in my shop. I was selling a hell of a lot of bondage trousers. By the time of the Jubilee, punk had gone up like a rocket in Britain. With remarkable speed, the look had spread to every main street in the country. Um, they got their ideas usually from the Daily Mirror or the Sun and how to be a punk. Punk kit, ten top tips. <laughs> what were they? Lesson one. Well, the proverbial leather jacket, which of course none of us wore at that time. How to spike your hair, what stuff to buy at Boots Chemist, uh, where to get the best safety pins. It was all nonsense. Utter rubbish. Just when punk was in danger of becoming monotonous, a band that had started around the same time as the Sex Pistols branched out in an unexpected direction. The Clash's roots in the tough Notting Hill district not only gave their music a political edge, but exposed them to new sounds. 
when the clash really first started, I was about 17. And really, it was a strange period because, I mean, you can walk down Portobello and you can hear a bit of reggae out the speaker over here. And then over here, they're playing Latin music or further down, there's rockabilly. It's quite strange if you stand in the middle and hear all these uh, influences all at the same time. The sound that would affect the clash the most was reggae. The Roxy, I don't know, it held about 2,000 people, and obviously they were all punks. And I was the DJ, and um, I lived in a house with about four other, four or five other. Sold separately. Harrow, the Christmas giant, presents its greatest after Christmas sale. Every Christmas item. Sale starts 7 a.m. December 26th. You will save at least 50% and as much as 70%. On every tree, wreath, animated figures, lights, garland, glass, candle, tree trim, greeting cards, gift wrap, and every Christmas item. Save at least 50% and as much as 70%. On all trees and other Christmas merchandise. At Harrow, 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. December 26th. Biggest sale of the year. Save 50 to 70%. At Harrow's throughout Long Island and in New Jersey. いやいや、今どうなったんですか。北斗が今ブルにアジャにパイルドライバーをされたんですかね。そしてブル様は今リング上アジャコングに用立ち。北斗はどこ
ダウンしているんじゃないでしょうかしかしタッグマッチという名のねでもこれチェンジ権は北斗が上がらないといけないんですよね試合今の今までねそうですね,ね,そうですねあ来た来たあやってきましたけれども今本当にこの試合はタッグマッチという名のなんでしょうバトルロイヤル的な要素もあります4者4用という感じで一体誰がタッグなのかもよくわからないような状況でありますけれどもさあブルノブルノあ体当たり押して北斗と言いながらじゃあ全速力でボディープレスあ出ましたよこれも得意の足を抱えてのドリアホールパイルドライバーカウント危ないぞさあ今度はブル様の登場だ足を畳んでおっと出ましたねブルズアンヘリーとかこれも耐えるしかないですねもう逃げようないですもんねこれねカンドリが助けない限りはそうですよね,そ,すね、まあ、それはありえないでしょうだから耐えるしかないんですねじっくりと赤コーナーでは戦況を見つめるカンドリー一体何を考えているんでしょうかそして今度は弓矢がために持っていきましたブル中野北斗がやはり試合開始からちょっと攻め込まれるシーンが目立っています今日のメインイベントはい。
I died of the same. Michelle does manage to get her to name her favorite film. Tough question. The devil is a woman, she picks, and he wants to know why. Good. You are giving me questions that cannot be answered in two minutes. But you put it down on your list. You said on the list, the best film MD ever made. Yes, so why you, you think should, it's the best should, film? You, you said you would... Do. You should have a stopwatch. You would... Uh, and you should say, I will have four minutes out of this and five minutes out of that. Well, I have... And two I have minutes for this out answer, of this. I have what? 32 seconds. So I give you 32 seconds to tell me why you think this is the best film. One, two, three. Because it's the best film tough lady, and he really has to work to get this interview, but he does get a very good interview on film, even without her face, today. Marlena Dietrich, to most people, if they know her at all, is simply the leggy star of the Blue Angel singing Falling in Love Again. Well, here she reveals herself as an energetic actress, as well as a powerful human being. See this film, and you'll want to start renting some of her movies, especially that cowgirl picture with Jimmy Stewart, Destry rides again. And that's exactly what happened to me. I saw this film and I went out and I rented The Blue Angel yeah. and I rented uh, Morocco right. and I rented Destry Rides Again. Yeah. I can't find The Devil is a Woman. Yeah. Uh, I was fascinated in all of those films, which uh, I, per I had seen The Blue Angel a long time ago. I was reminded by this documentary what a remarkable screen performer she was. She was yeah. not really a traditional actress. She was more of a, of a natural force, a yeah. phenomenon, yeah. and she still is. Yeah. And you're right. The extra sugar from this process joins the rest of the sugar in the factory line. Then it passes over screens and goes to our storage silos. From the storage silos, it is either packaged in 50-pound bags or loaded directly into trucks. Those bags may end up anywhere on Earth. Sugar has become a global economic powerhouse, but not until it rose from delicious curiosity to treasure worth fighting for. Stuffy nose, congested? Congestac. Ah. McClugg-situses. Congested? Congestac. Ah. 
My chest is so congested. Congested? Congestac. <sighs> Introducing Congestac tablets. More complete congestion relief than ActiFed or Sudafed. They only relieve head congestion. Congestac relieves chest congestion, too. And Congestac won't make you drowsy. Congested? Of course. New Congestac. Uh -huh. Ah. Kids are taking a closer look at Oreo cookies. If you find an Oreo like this, pack your bag. You just won an awesome trip to Hollywood, Hawaii, even a World Series game. It's your call, plus over a million more prizes. See Mark packs are right here. Oh, please. No, 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 please. Don't eat it! Look closely, there are lots more prizes. Show it to me! Mm. Only Oreo. Color TV for Christmas or a portable TV. Get a TV for Christmas now because Crazy Eddie's Christmas sale is going on right now with prices so low he's practically giving TVs away. Shop around, check all the advertised specials, get the best prices you can find, then go to Crazy Eddie and he'll beat them. So get a TV for Christmas. Get it now because Crazy Eddie's Christmas sale is on right now with prices that are insane. Crazy Eddie now with 10 great locations in Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Syosset, Paramus, East Brunswick, Union, Westchester, Westbury. Monday at 9, WGNR Furniture offers six months free interest and there's no down payment required. Buy a sofa and matching love seat for just $4.99, $5.99, or $6.99. Two beautiful pieces, one low price, and outstanding value. Plus, Beach by Arctic Ocean. Music by Metallica and Hole. Light show by Mother Nature. And ice by Molson. Molson Ice. The Molson Ice Polar Beach Party, Labor Day Weekend 1995. Also appearing, Veruca Salt and Moist. Tuktoyaktuk, Arctic Canada. Get up there. It's something to him. The things that grew inside of him that he was fighting so uh, just took hold. And he wasn't able to control it. <laughs> That's where we always meet. Plagued by mental illness, James Carr was destined to spend the rest of his life in and out of hospital until his death in 2001. But he left us with a legacy of some of the most moving soul music to emerge from the South and a haunting song that secured his place in music history. At the dark end of the street Imagine the cruel, creamy taste of a Dairy Queen or frozen yogurt sundae. Maybe butterscotch or hot fudge. Now, imagine that it's absolutely free. Because that's the deal at Dairy Queen. Enjoy a great premium sandwich like tender chicken or a home-style ultimate burger. And the sundae is free. No one does sundaes like Dairy Queen. Just think, buy a premium sandwich, get a Dairy Queen sundae free. Imagine that theme here at CES was technology offering new ways to add internet style e-commerce to television. This is an interesting company called Gamut Interactive that introduced a new gadget which lets you scan the barcodes off products or even ads and convert those barcodes into special offers or discount coupons. The Gamut reader even lets you read a barcode off a television program and then converts that information into discounts and special offers which you then download onto a smart card. Bring the smart card into your local shop and you get your discount. Or go online with this sinking cradle and download even more free offers. Fuse 3 technology is taking this a step further. They have developed a technology called virtual bookmarking that lets you embed e-commerce data in the audio portion of the television signal. And with this data, what we can do is alert the user that, hey, there's an enabled commercial, there's an enabled content, whether they're on radio, driving in their car, or at home watching TV, and at their leisure, they can go and then simply connect the device to their PC, and it quickly brings up a manager. We're calling it the connection manager. that shows them various links that are available on the internet that might give them more information or allow them to buy the product online. With these data codes we put in there, though, we're not just taking them to the domain name. We can take them to the very, very deep URL. 
fact, our partners can use database queries in the scripting of those URLs to take them to specific product sites, and bring up all their e-commerce stuff, bring up a digital wallet and close a transaction. So rather than just write down the homepage URL for a company after seeing their commercial, you just dump the data into your PC and it automatically goes to the related web pages. A lot of the advertising right now is trying to push the domain name at people. What this allows them to do is to go to a very deep URL, directly to the product site. The end user, if they're looking at cars, for example, from some company, let's just Toyota as an example. They don't go to Toyota.com and then try to find the model they're looking for. They go directly to the RAV4 site and maybe directly to a promotion for the RAV4 site with some... It is impossible for any of these other structures to match Khufu's tremendous Great Pyramid. But when taken as a whole, the Giza complex is undoubtedly deserving of its title as a wonder of the world. However, the very fact that the pyramids of Giza are so astounding causes some people to question science's traditional view of these monuments. Recently, Road and Track chose its 10 best cars for the 80s. See three of these winners at your Southern California Porsche Audi dealer now. Introducing the 5,000 CS Turbo Quattros from Audi. There are no cars like them in the world. Permanent all-wheel drive. 0 to 50 in 5.7 seconds. And with their anti-lock braking system, they go from 50 to 0. Even quicker. Audi, the art of engineering. Information on breaking the sound barrier. Log on to ChuckYeager.com. with the 75th anniversary event where nothing goes right. <laughs> Fractured moments from your favorite shows. NBC's funniest outtakes. <laughs> then, for Frazier and Roz, it was only a matter of time. Shut up! Fight me! Before it came to this. <laughs> Frazier and Roz on a brand new Frazier. Followed by Brendan Fraser on an all-new Scrubs. It all happens NBC Tonight. We end up yeah, we this, like, together. <laughs> Very first. And it's kind of fun. Because everybody's like, I want my own dressing room. Want my own yeah, dressing then, room. Then when everybody gets their own dressing room, and then everybody goes into this one little dressing room. People have been mimicking the band for forever and ever, and there's this myth, and there's the that, and this, and this, and this. And you say, well, you know, here we are playing together. Why don't we actually go out? It was just good timing. I guess everybody was in a good mood at that moment. and. It sounded like a fun idea. There was an excellent opportunity here for, for reuniting and doing, doing something that uh, we could all be proud of again. It was great. I mean, there were, people got to see what Mo did with those drums and got to see what Sterling was doing. and, and no one had any idea that there was so much coming from that corner of the stage. But it was hard to go out, you know. Was, you know, you have to have lights and you have to have uh, the sound and all the rest of it and a record and it, it became complicated. There was this sudden feeling that whatever was happening to the three other members was certainly different from what was happening with Lou. 
and that lose interest and in, in everything else was, was being addressed as a very separate issue. This was not a ban. Even with the things that were pissing us off, still we all three of us, and Lou too, I suppose, but the three of us, we really wanted to not turn this into a fight and not be friends again. The European tour happened over. Wet nail color. Nothing looks as slick. Nothing looks as shiny. Now you can have that look, even when it's dry. With CoverGirl Nail Slicks, the nail color with a shine that never lets go. Nail slicks strengthen too, so nails feel strong, last long. For nails that look wet even when they're dry, get CoverGirl Nail Slicks. And for even more color and shine, get CoverGirl Lipsticks. Welcome back to Detroit, Michigan. We're on the back stretch of the unlimited hydroplane course. It is bordered in part by the Detroit Yacht Club on beautiful Belle Isle. The results from Heat 3A, the Tide first, American Spirit second, DOC Ray Band did not start, DOC AccuView was disqualified. George Woods, our winner of Heat 3A in the Tide. George, it's back to the old days. Time starts, five laps, he made a good start though. Yeah, I'll tell you, Steve, it's really tough. You know, we only get to do this once a year, and we come down here to the Detroit River, and this is a tough river to race against all by itself. And we have a tight corner down here. It gets crowded, and a real short run to the clock. It, uh, it stretches our expertise quite a bit. And everybody's going to be going for it. The Gold Cup, that is. A lot of tradition there. Bernie Little going for his ninth as owner of the Miss Budweiser. Jim Hendrick talked to him yesterday about that. Down here with Bernie Little, who has eight times had the Gold Cup at his house, you're looking for a ninth, and it's always exciting. Yes, it is, Jim. Uh, uh, we hope to take this home with us today. Uh, needless to tell you that it's been there for quite a while, and it'd be leave an awful empty place in my office and on my piano at home. So we're going to go real hard to get it done today. Here are the boats that are going to go real hard in Heat 3B, T-plus, with uh, Steve David aboard, Jim Harvey's boat, the Winston Eagle, Steve Woomer, the owner of that boat, Mark Tate driving it, the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, and, of course, owner Bernie Little. Rounding out the field will be Mike Hansen of Madison, Indiana, and the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Bob Hughes is the owner rep on that boat. As they start Heat 3B, Dick, look at this. The Miss Budweiser chooses lane number one. That's got to surprise everybody in the field, including Mark Tate. This is the first time those two boats, the Miss Budweiser and the Winston Eagle, have matched up on the course here in the Detroit River in this Gold Cup competition. And what happens? But Chip Hanauer goes to lane one. He knows what he's doing. He knows his boat. He's leading as they come out of turn number two. He makes it out onto the back stretch, and he's got a clear run straight ahead. Chip Hanauer has raced since the age of 10 years old. He was in the Nationals of the Jade class. As we look at the fight for second place between the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes on the outside, and look at Mark Tate put the pedal to the metal and take over second place in the Winston Eagle, and a problem. The problem, the Miss T-plus has gone down in the water, and that's mostly steam coming off of the boat at the moment. It looks like Stephen David... Lots of people with telephones not made by AT&T are reporting some kind of complaint. When was the last time you had a complaint with an AT&T phone? Get the first class phones of AT&T. You get what you pay for. AT&T, the right choice. On the next Super Chunk, things get a little crazy. And if you don't watch someday, you'll think, man, I really should have watched that time things got a little crazy. What a shame. Droopy Super Chunk, Saturday at 4 on Cartoon Network. Hi, I'm a superhero. That means I have abilities that are a bit unique. For instance, I ride a giant seahorse. I can breathe water. And... Uh, I call that aquatic telepathy. <laughs> anyway, Cartoon Network is the best place for cartoons like me, because where else is this? Considered a useful job skill. Cartoon Network, the best place for cartoons. <laughs> Hi, Aquaman. Hi, Fred. He gets more vacation, vacation than I do.
For all the do-it-yourselfer dads out there, Sears has the largest selection of tools for Father's Day. Like this 54-piece Craftsman Mechanics tool set, made in America, guaranteed forever, only $39.99 including case and Sears exclusive quick-release ratchet. Or this Craftsman three-drawer rally box with tumbler lock, also $39.99. For thousands of gift ideas you can work with, this Father's Day, make it Craftsman Tools. Only at Sears, bringing America's best to you. guest for tonight. You'll be seeing him as the star of the Milton Berle special, March 9th, on his own network. Here is Mr. Television himself, Mr. Milton Berle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you're looking very well out there. And I look beautiful, pal, yes. huh? What, you got a Polaroid camera in there? No, the stock is in here. The stock. <laughs> then you're fat, man. No, I... this is a Polaroid camera. Yeah, what are you going to do with it? Well, that's my secret. Oh, that's your secret, Want me man. to tell you what it is? I'll hold this for you. I'll tell you what the secret is. All right, you tell me what it is. Well, in this camera right here, there is a photograph of a card of a, from a decorative... ライドガンワイルドレディーフォーエブリーそんな余裕あるかなうんどうでしょうねねこれあの宮本さんに聞かなくちゃいけないんですけどもいけてもいけないんですけども余裕はなさそうねねしかもあの曲を書いてますねね
中でなんとか牽制を挽回していかなくちゃいけませんだからこういったところに自分のペースに持っていかなくちゃいけないんですけどもまあなんといっても強気攻撃がありますし当然あの反則攻撃はありますし、えー、ですから自分のペースに持っていくのが大変だと思いますそして前川登場してまいりました一段と歓声が上がっている前川このキックオンカップでありますキックまたキック前川かっこいいでしょ前川さん、えー、ナイスゴディの割にはねそうそう頭がなんかね男らしいんですよねこの人もいかにもあの格闘技者とそういった感じですよね JD Buy Rider get to be North America's largest used car dealer? We give people what they want. Financing in a flash. Huge inventory. Certified cars backed by our rock solid warranty. If you need a car, see JD Buy Rider. We'll see that you get the car that you want and the credit you deserve. You get the credit. Call 1 800 808 4089 now. You can collect all the titles in the original X Men series from Polygram Video. The one and only. X-Men. Spider-Man's getting ready to rumble. Oh no, it's Doc Ock, Venom, and the Green Goblin. Fantastic action coming up. Take that, Green Goblin. Different surfaces for the best place to start a new colony. It often settles on a piece of coral rock. Cleaned by grazing fish. When the planula settles, it is smaller than a pinhead, about two weeks old, and changes shape as it grows. Coral is both plant and animal, and that's the secret of its success. Inside each coral individual live plant cells. They are the yellow brown spots seen in this top view. They photosynthesize by day and their byproduct is used as food by the coral for rapid growth. In turn, the plant cells, seen here in close up, thrive on the coral's nitrogen rich output. So both recycle each other's waste products. It's mutualism, an arrangement from which each benefits. It's a month old now. And this rare time-lapse view shows us the young polyp over a period of several hours. This is how an individual polyp begins its life as a result of sexual reproduction. Once established, it spreads through asexual reproduction, cloning itself to form a colony of thousands of genetically identical individuals. Each one is a tiny predator an eighth of an inch across, consisting of stinging tentacles surrounding a central mouth. As each one grows, it forms its own compartment by manufacturing the calcium carbonate mineral aragonite. A honeycomb of rock is built up, giving shelter to each polyp and structure to the colony. During the day, the tentacles withdraw and the coral's algae cells photosynthesize. By night, the tentacles extend to feed on plankton. Cheerios and fruit. Some couples were just made for each other. Now, Berry Burst Cheerios brings together real bananas, strawberries, and those classic O's for a taste you can fall in love with again and again. New Strawberry Banana Berry Burst Cheerios. When Texas was young, she lived by the gun. Her heroes are buried in the sand. And deep in my soul, wherever I go, I know who I Try the soup, dear. It's new. Introducing Campbell's chicken with white and wild rice, snappy red peppers, 
white and wild rice for a taste that's truly mm. wild. <laughs> Campbell's chicken with white and wild rice. It's a wild new taste. Can you taste the wild rice? Yes, I believe I can. Campbell's. Who's this guy? Back. Where they get away from me? Wrap up the holidays with Batman. The gift you want to give, the gift they want to get. Batman on video cassette for sale at stores everywhere. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Holiday hits. Santa Bob here with everything you need to make this year the best ever. Right now, Crystal's offering this festive holiday glass for only 79 cents. Grab one every time you go in, and pretty soon you will have the whole set. My work here is done. Now, where are the cookies they usually leave for me? George, have you seen the cookies? Head to Crystal and collect a whole set of holiday glasses. They're only 79 cents each. Wyatt and Gary were a little unpopular. So they decided to do a little something about it. She's alive! Alive! I'm going to show you guys the time of your life. It was the biggest mistake they ever made. And the best thing that ever happened to them. It's purely sexual. <laughs> Weird Science. Rated PG-13. Now at select theaters. Check newspapers. Gary, what I have here is a ROM chip in this cartridge. And I'm going to take this ROM chip and stick it inside this machine. And load it in there and press a couple of buttons... And if everything works according to plan... This is an example of, of computer music, and computer music is our subject today. This, this little RAM pack, which I have over here, has 15 songs on it. Uh, matter of fact, there's a, a ROM chip of the month club now where you can buy your popular songs on a chip instead of on a cassette tape or, or on a record. Uh, this is a, a simple example, but, but how does a computer make music? How is it doing this? Well, as you're aware, Stuart, this is a very special device. It's not a general purpose computer. Uh, but most of the home computers that uh, are available now, like the Commodore 64 or the IBM personal computer, have special hardware for sound generation or mm -hmm. tone generation. And what you do is you write a program in uh, basic or logo or one of those languages, if you like, and, and then you can produce a tone, series of tones and a certain frequency and duration. Uh, and I understand there's also, there are also some software packages coming about that are like word processing packages, only it's for music processing mm -hmm. or score processing. And uh, it's going to be interesting today, I think, because we have some real experts that will tell us all about it. Indeed we will. We'll be meeting Will Harvey, the author of Music Construction Set. We'll see a demonstration of the Alpha Centauri music system. And there are two major centers for computer music in the country, one here in Northern California at Stanford. We'll be meeting the director of the Stanford Center later on in the program. First, let's go across the country to Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a visit to MIT's Experimental Music Studio. The use of computers in musical composing is not a new idea. But recent advances are giving composers a new degree of power over their medium, the ability to create and manipulate sound waves of their own.